believe in yourself. I believe in Liam. I miss completely. Okay, there we go. Kaboom. Mess them up. Okay, there's still people over there shooting at me. We're going to get this gun out here and just go. Hey, hey, ooh. I'm trying to. Whoa, what is this guy doing? What a what the hell? Whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. Where did they come from? <laughs> Where did all those guys come from? What the hell? Where did all those guys come from? Use the power of fright. They are very dangerous and they will murder things on their bellies. Like literally on their bellies, they will murder things. So if, if, if an otter approaches you and says, hey, you want to cuddle? Come, come hang out on my belly right now. You're about to get murdered. I'm just letting you know because it's important for you to know you're about to die okay anyway let's get back to the game is this even a thing i can do where is this is him where oh yeah i can do that i can definitely do that right right can i do that yes yes okay you got it, little buddy. I'm gonna murder. I'm gonna murder. Buddy, you don't worry about a thing. I'm gonna kill your pet. I'll see you later. I hear Chica. Like her footsteps, not just like her. I hear her footsteps somewhere. Oh, you're here. What the fuck? <laughs> I could go either way. You don't like Place? You don't like him? Because he kind of is, you know, responsible for your existence, so probably should have some appreciation. <laughs> you know, I heard he could too. Why? Oh. <laughs> It actually did take me a second to kind of figure that one out. I was like, huh? Oh. <laughs> it really did. It's the banana. Whoop bam Uh-oh. I'm in a struggle. You're no match for banana blade. Did they beat me? No, you you don't get banana blade. Uma, they took my banana blade. She asks if you're hurt. What? She says it's nice of you to consider them, but they have weapon training at sunrise tomorrow, so they'll need all the rest they can get. But they took my banana blade. The most important thing is that you're okay. Mom, I'm not okay. It's time to focus on your. I am. I am most definitely not okay. Kalina, turn back. Run! Run faster! You're going so slow! Why are you so slow? Okay. Is that it? I made it! Oh! Wow! Was I supposed to do something there? <laughs> Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> oh, I found the ring. Ooh, and there's the beehive. We did it. Guys, I survived an explosion somehow. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but I did it. It's great. You know, it, it, it went exactly as I planned. I don't know if you guys realize this, but that was my exact plan. Our way. Take the bait. Take it. Got him. <laughs> All right. Here. Got him. Yes. Whoa. Holy shit. That's a big fucking fish. Holy.
Hello, 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 hello. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to a special Monday night stream. Well, today we normally don't stream on Mondays, but I thought I would do a special one today because I did want to get this game in. I have like kind of got lost on lost in the shuffle a little bit um, with scary games coming up, a lot of collabs coming up. Uh, uh, and I wanted to make sure we got this game finished. So I decided to do a special stream tonight where we finish off Kalma Rebbe. Uh, if you guys haven't been around for this, this is a kind of story based, like uh, visual novel, semi dating sim kind of a thing uh, with furry fuzzy boyfriends. Uh, if you haven't seen them, they're the same person by, by Clace, um, who has done a couple other games. One is the, oh my gosh, what is that one? Uh, there's a couple of games that they've done. I'm struggling to remember the name of it for some reason all of a sudden. Um, I don't know why I can't remember it. But today's game is Komarebi. Uh, they've done a couple other games very similar to style to this. And Clace just so happens to be a character in the game that we are playing with. So uh, we're going to see what this is all about. We've kind of gotten to the end. I'm pretty sure we're towards the end of this. So we want to see where this all goes. Um, I'm very curious, like how this ends, because there is like a deeper mystery going on here and I do want to know more about it. Um, I'm very curious, like how the main storyline unfolds. So if you don't remember, he's kind of behind me. Taylor, Taylor's my favorite. I love Taylor. I love Taylor so much. Taylor's a fellow streamer who, um, who is just cute and also the most forward of the team. But I think like the one we've probably connected with the most is Isaac. Um, he's I think we're dating from what I remember. He still can't get my name, my name right, though. But, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Minor flaws. You have to let those things go if you want to have a good relationship. Sometimes you just have to let those things go. go. But uh, I do want to see where this thing ends. There is a bit of a mystery going on. There's like a bigger storyline beyond the dating stuff. And uh, I'm curious to see what happens with it because um, it's kind of a big thing. And I really enjoyed this game. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the characters are really good. The story's been fun. The writing's been great. Uh, the voice acting has been phenomenal. Um, a lot of you guys know a lot of these people from them or who these like voice actors are from. Um, I'm pretty sure Isaac or Taylor back here is by Michael Kovac. Uh, you have um, uh, Jonas. Is it Jonas Gray who uh, plays like Lagoshi on um, Beastars? So um, there's, there's other people on there. I'm going to struggle to remember their names. I didn't look it up beforehand. I really should have done that. But let's see what happens. I'm really curious to see what happens. And um, before I do, I'm going to have Theo say a couple of things. So, Theo, take it away, buddy. Oh. Oh, oops. Thought I did that. Hold on one second. We're going to try that one more time here in a second. There it is. All right. Theo, wake up, buddy. You got a job to do, buddy. You got a job. You got to wake up. You can't be lazy on a Monday just because it's Monday. Lemurs are some of the most endangered mammals on the planet, and we must protect them. The Lemur Conservation Foundation is an amazing organization doing just that to ensure that lemurs will be around for the world to enjoy. The Leem That Streams is proud to support an ongoing donation drive right here on Twitch for the Lemur Conservation Foundation. So, if you want to support the stream in an awesome way, and can afford it, check it out. To learn more about the Lemur Conservation Foundation, check out the link in chat at thelemurreserve.org. And feel free to do so, guys. Um, we are continuing this process with the Lemur Conservation Foundation. Uh, we are at $155 of our $200 goal. And if we continue to reach the next goal, we'll just keep going. Um, we're going to increase it, increase it, increase it, increase it until we feel like we can stop. But uh, it's a really cool organization that I'm very proud to support. And I'm happy that we're a part of it. So check it out. Uh, go check out the link in uh, chat if you want to learn more and know that if you donate through my Twitch, uh, every cent goes straight to them. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I have one more thing. If you want to follow the Leem the Streams and other places other than Twitch, uh, you can do so. We have a lot of places you can go check out. I'll have Theo talk about that for just a second. 
The lean that streams can be found all over the web for more information and content. YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Discord. Scan the QR code on the screen now, or go to any of the links in chat. While you are there, why not give a follow, like, subscribe, join the Discord, and you can be a part of the lean conspiracy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, a couple things to look out for is tomorrow we're going to play some more Overcooked with uh, Demon Otter Games and C. James Fox, which has been a crazy fun time. So if you haven't seen those, check them out. They're hilarious. It's a crazy, chaotic game. We've been having a great time with it. I hope you guys come to join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Then we'll continue our Final Fantasy 16 adventure on Wednesday. Uh, so we got a nice little head start there. We got a little bit of storyline going on. I think we're getting towards like maybe the later half of the game. So let's see what happens there. And then on Saturday, Saturday, guys, we have a big one. Uh, Saturday, we got Phasmophobia. Uh, we're going to start our spooky games. Uh, and this is going to be joining us with like Hi-Fi Wolf. Uh, what up, Milo? And I've, I'm looking this up right now. Oh, my God. Hold on. My brain is mush today. I cannot think at all. Okay, schedule, schedule. There it is. Um, oh, shit. The hell? How do I... Oh, I forgot to change that out. Shit, okay, hold on. God damn it. Nope. Okay, so we're going to be playing with Hi-Fi Wolf, 1UP Milo, and Emil Faru, who is going to be playing with us for the first time. We played The Forest um, recently, and uh, the, Emil Faru is going to play with us for Phasmophobia. We thought it'd be a good time for to do that um, with, uh, you know, the spooky month in play, which is like kind of the goal, right? So we're going to see how cool this is. I think it's going to be a big, chaotic, fun time. So come join us on Saturday. I'm really excited for it. But with all of that being said, um, let's do this. Let's play some. Let's play some Komarebi, guys. Let's do it. Uh, I'm gonna get. Well, I actually don't normally do this, so I'm just gonna stay over here. And Theo, get out of the way, buddy. But well, let's do this. Here we are. Oh, that's still up. Go away. There we go. So we're gonna continue on. I think we're towards the end of the game here. So I'm going to figure out what's happening. Who's all there? What's all going down? What the mystery is? All the fun stuff. Let's do it. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, we answered a major question. So for me, that's enough resolution. Yeah, that was a pretty good finale. Definitely fit the tone and style of everything. Sure. Uh, definitely fit the tone and style of everything. We must have just finished the D and D thing. I forgot about nice that. Nice little twist at the end too. I mean, my father was the leader of the Thorns. Yes, that's true. Well, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Well, yes, he was actually. Hold on. Let me make a quick adjustment. I just noticed something. Bum bum. All right, there we go. That's a little bit more in line with the game. So let's see what that looks like. And go for it. Go away, first of all. There we go. I thought I'd triple down on the irony. Gotta feel bad for your character, though. <laughs> Don't make him feel bad about it. He's just doing his thing. Well, he did what he had to do. It's like he always does. Right. Now he has closure on something that haunted him forever. Okay. Well... I'm sure he did. It's kind of cool how this all lined up with our own world, too. Why? Oh, right, because it was uh, kind of a similar ending. I get it. I get what you're saying. Hmm. Well, our rebellion took down the Triumvirate, right? They were clearly evil, so we changed the world for the better. But there was a power struggle between us and the Thorns. If we can... Oh, Oops, I didn't mean to push that. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. 
If we treat Argus like the Triumvirate, the result could be the same. Competitors sure. will rise up, taking advantage of the gap in power. Right. That seems to make sense, except it doesn't. Why? Well, did Taylor do that on purpose? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the, here's the mystery that we have yet to solve. We do not know who... We know who Hermes is, like the leader of like the Resistance, and that actually is Isaac here. Who apparently is my my I'm dating Isaac. I'm dating I'm dating I'm dating Hermes, apparently. Great. Um, but we don't know who the leader of Argus is yet. And I almost think there's a really big chance, really big chance, that they're gonna make it somebody we know. And I'm curious to see what they do with that, because I think they could definitely do that. But well, let's see what they do. That's the most realistic outcome, yeah. But I imagine in our world, the competition won't be as underhanded. In our world? Why would it be different in our world? Or is that don't make Hopefully. Well, don't get your hopes up there, Dante. Or that. Or that. We'll probably just see new companies rise up, each one with their own unique identity and benefits, but they'll all be tied to the system, not just Dargus. That's pretty optimistic. I don't know if that's how it's going to go down, but we'll see. Do you think Argus is using the system to their own end? Probably. If they were, it was probably in the name of the greater good. Even I agree that Como Rebi requires some level of social control. Yeah, I guess if it was causing people that much mental distress, that makes sense. But... Hmm to use it the way that they are unless they are the ones that created it because I've always said I kind of think that might be the case but we'll see I don't really know but not nearly as much as they've led us to believe they're using fear of the unknown as a weapon okay why would they do that though and it was working too well it did you're right you are absolutely right anime Legoshi. I'm loving all these parallels. I don't know why I keep Real saying I keep saying that. I keep saying that. I keep calling him Anime Legoshi, and then I realize halfway through I'm like, he's in an anime. It doesn't really make any sense. I think it's more like Kawaii, or I don't know, maybe something like that. It's like smaller Legoshi. Of something like that. How's it going, JoJo? You baited me into doing this. If I let down the storyteller of the group, I'd be crushed. Oh, yes, you would be. Uh, I'd crush you, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, you did a good job. Even connected Isaac's backstory to the overall narrative. How you doing, Jojo? Hope you're having a good night. Is there a term for that? No, there's definitely no term for that. It's just called connecting plot threads. It makes the conclusion a lot more satisfying. Without a strong foundation, everything just falls apart. <laughs> okay. And calling them threads is a metaphor, right? Uh, no, I think that's like an actual term. Kinda. You want all your threads to be as strong as possible. We all know what happens when you tug on a loose one. Uh-huh. Everything falls apart. Right. Oh, yeah, well, you would know about that with your one article of clothing. It's pretty cool when you think about it, right? Isaac is part of a rebellion, just like the characters in our campaign were. Sure. And because we've got his back, we're members, too. Right. Us? Agents of Cypher? All of us. We are all agents of Cypher. In fact, there is a TV spinoff ready to go. I don't know if you know about this, but there's going to be a TV spinoff. Yeah. It's coming, guys. It's coming. Thought. <sighs> Sorry for not telling you sooner. Right? You say we're agents of Cypher, but I'm going to say we're unwilling accomplices. Well, that's not untrue. But that makes it sound let's so be more boring. optimistic about Isaac it, please. The world I'm just going to say, what? Oh, you make it sound so boring. We can't help Isaac change the world here. If we fail? Uh, We've come too far to fail. If we were going to lose, it would have been ages ago. That is pretty bad. No, sorry, phone wet meant to say, oh my God, that is Boyfriend Treason Simulator <laughs> 2023. It is, it is. We're finishing it tonight. Tonight's the done, the end, we're end. We're, we're finito. Let's do this. Probably as soon as he applied Chiron's identity to that phone. Yes. Yeah, 
That was the riskiest part. Well, yeah. Also, in trapping us all into it, you criminal. Even if you are my boyfriend, I still think you're a criminal. You mean whatever you're planning at their HQ is But no more risky? anime negotiate. I can't say that. I realized that afterwards. I was saying that the whole time. And then I thought about it, and I was like, he's already in an anime. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> oh, it definitely That's is. just Lagoshi. Not as much as you'd think. <laughs> what? Oh, just as much it's as you'd think. smooth sailing so far, and I aim to keep it that way. More anime like anime squared. He's like anime 2.0, you know? If you say so. If you say so. Well, I don't, but maybe he does. He's also got that smirk again. It's never good when he gets that smirk. If you're starting to doubt things, just look at the town square. Okay. I'm looking at the town square. What about it? What about it? Yeah, what about it? Complete unity. Well, I don't know about that. City folk have started feeding and hanging out with the Zeros. Both uh -huh. sides are now part of the protest. And what is Argus doing about it? Nothing. Everyone was worried about stepping in and getting in trouble, but it's not happening. So it's just inspiring more people to help. Maybe they're waiting for the right moment. Did you think of that? How about that? Well, did you think of that? Maybe they're waiting until everyone's most vulnerable, and then they'll strike. <laughs> Our entire journey so far has been filled with worry. Sure, but it was always worry about what could happen. It's never been based on what has happened. Well, that's how worry works. <laughs> if you were always worried about things that have happened, that would make as much sense. I don't think Isaac is smart enough to be the leader of a, a terrorist organization. And each day Not that sure passes, he can. more stuff keeps happening. Our concerns have been put to rest almost every single day. Why? So it's time to start basing our thoughts on reality. Okay, we I'm in. Use fear of the unknown against us. Well, we Remember, can. That's always been their most valuable weapon. Sure, that is true. But I think you're overestimating how safe we actually are. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Isaac. Let's not do it. You have a point. No, he does not. No, he does not. That is not true. Wow, what a speech. Maybe we should have made you the monarch. Hey, hey, wait a minute. That's my job. I like how they don't know he's Hermes, but he always talks like he's Hermes. Yeah, he, he kind of has given it away a lot. Like he has kind of been pretty, uh, pretty transparent to the end here, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. He, he's not, he's not making a lot of sense right now. I'm going to give him that. Oh, I definitely rock that crown. That's my crown. Okay. Listen, you don't get my crown. That is mine. We all smile as our time with the campaign comes to an end. But with it comes a striking similarities to a current situation. Similarities that fill me with resolve rather than fear. I remember thinking of some similarities when we first started. But back then, so much was uncertain. It's impressive how far we've come in such a short time. Isaac telling us about his link to Cypher seems to unite us even more. I gotta say, being an agent of Cypher sounds pretty awesome. We're gonna witness the end of Argus Monopoly and the aftermath. If Cypher is like the Rebellion, then they'd rise up after this all ends. If only Dante knew how much irony was behind that statement. Isaac should be the monarch? Well, he technically was. So what I'm understanding is Dante is gonna betray us and then kill Taylor? Oh no, please no. That would be sad. I that would be a hell of an ending though. I would love to that would be something. I do feel like I do feel like they are going to throw a twist in that we do know the leader of Argus, like we probably do. Like I feel like that's a twist that's totally coming. I don't know who it is yet, but that's what I'm expecting. He's running Cypher much like how I ran the Rebellion. 
and the monarchy, and just like me, he was uniquely qualified to take on the task. His entire life has led up to this. I won't spoil it. Okay. His entire life has led up to this Sunday. Thankfully, there's no one I trust more than him, especially when it came to bringing us a better future. Okay, bye. Save it for the sequel. Oh, God. But that's what I'm saying. There's definitely a twist that we haven't gotten to yet, and I'm curious what it's going to be. I'm not that far. I'm really not that far. So I got to do one more Experience major sequence. Pivotal fragment. Okay, Possibly. not yet, though. Let me check the journals. Journals? The I have no journal. journal entry. Have I done any of these? I don't remember. I in the clear. I don't really understand what's happening to me. Uh, part of me wanted to counselor that I wasn't or wasn't doing too well. I did do that one. I do remember that one. Okay. Uh, I think I did all those. The I may not have done five, though. Let me do five. Hermes Day. The twist is that you're the leader of Argus? Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Living life in the future instead of the present. Normally, that would describe all of my friends, but lately, it's described me and my relationship with my memories. At the end of the day, our own experiences really are the most valuable things in the world. Feeling that belongs to you and nobody else. At least, that's how things were supposed to be. Just like Koma Rebbe disturbed the natural order of things, it seems like the new nostalgia technology may do the same thing. We will either become prisoners to our own past, addicted to reliving our highlights over and over, or to start to turn to other people's lives in a commodity, a story to be bought and sold. I didn't expect to have you along for the ride, but I guess some kind of biggest moments in my life are unexpected, right? Do you know how sometimes you can sense someone's true nature? Like spending a second with somebody can tell you all you need to know. That kind of happened with you. No matter what, I can tell your intentions aren't bad in any way. Argus is playing some sort of four-dimensional chess here, aren't they? As if Koma Rebi and the system aren't enough for a nuisance. They're discovering new ways to control us. If this nostalgia technology comes to fruition, we'll never know which moment in time could be used against us in the future. At least now, we know it's only when we leave the house and stuff like that. With this new tech, most people will spend every second of every day regulating their lives, making pre pure memories. I feel like that may be the end goal. Either way, we're about to find out. We're in this together now. Just, you, me, just like me and my friends promised each other at the start of this until the end. So I do agree with your past statement, Jojo, that I think that like, I do think you're right that this is probably Delta. This whole thing is Delta reliving Delta's memories in the past. And that may be a big thing. And I should probably be over here, but that may be a big part of it. God, I don't know if like Delta might actually be the leader of Argus. Maybe that's it. I don't know, but like that would be weird to me. I don't know. Um, okay, let's do this last major segment. I still have actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this Experience. one first. Heart to heart fragment. It's the last heart to heart. Okay, we're gonna do Isaac's heart to heart. It's my, we're dating now, so I guess I gotta do it, but, you know, I'm obligated. I'm obligated to do this. Isaac, baby, what's going on? I asked for some private time with Isaac, and nobody seems to mind. This might be our last chance for uh, Heart to Heart before Hermes Days. Day. It must be pretty, pretty flattery to have a day named after yourself, huh? Enjoying the con so far? Yeah, it's been great. I bet. Well, let's use the money to take a vacation together. Yeah, baby, let's do it right now. Like, uh, just the two of us? I'm game. But, uh, where should we go? I don't know. Do you like, uh, do you like Minnesota? He starts thinking, but then he stops almost immediately. Actually, let's not derail the conversation. I take it you wanted to talk about something specific? Uh, well... I'm wondering if what your thoughts are on Swiss cheese versus mozzarella, because they're both white, but one is a little drier and it has holes in it. It's a little saltier, 
but I do like mozzarella because it's very smooth, even though it's kind of wet, but it has a very mild taste to it. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that. Now, this could make or break our relationship, so I'm curious what you want to say. So pick your words carefully. Pick your words carefully. You mean my true role in all this? Trust me, I'm still coming to terms with it myself. That is not what I was asking, but okay, huh? He starts facing around the room as he speaks. You know it's all tied to my vision, right? Oh, oh yeah, you have sure not Dante told me about that. that. Perfectly clear. Well, if Dante knows... How does Dante not know about this then? Does Dante know about this? I guess that could be true. What if Dante does know about this? Hmm. Can you imagine having a weight like that on your shoulders? No. Knowing that you need to be the one who changes the world? Is that what your vision was? I can't imagine that kind of pressure, no. Exactly. Not many can. In fact, I don't well, think that we're not meant to. All right. That makes sense to a certain degree. But I've lived it every day for almost my entire life. And I know that nothing but absolute perfection will ensure my success. Great. That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. I don't so. think it's possible to recreate a vision one-to-one. -one. I think there's always going to be differences and changes. But with how much is on the line, I can't afford any of that. For about a decade, I've lived knowing that I have to achieve the impossible. Okay, now you're just being a little dramatic, okay? <laughs> I think Isaac might be being a little dramatic here. Just saying. He's putting a lot of pressure on himself. Really over talking. He's like, oh, I'm so important. You can't believe how important I am. I get it. I get it. You're important. And if I don't pull it off, then nothing changes. Largus still has us in their pocket, and the zeros are still stuck outside. That's true. Is it so much to ask for just a little harmony in the world? Well, a little bit. That's a lot to ask for. I can't help but sympathize with him. It must feel nice to open about, up about this stuff, though. Part of me feels like I'm the first person he's ever told. I used to tell myself that a miracle would happen. That one day a switch would flick and everything would make sense. All the missing pieces would fall into place and I'd be able to pull this off. Okay. Well, you, you seem to be doing okay. You're doing fine, buddy. I promise you, you're doing better than most. But that hasn't happened. I've been winging it this entire time. Okay, you're not filling me with a lot of confidence so it's here. taught me one valuable lesson. Great. What is that? There's no such thing as a miracle. All Just right. Oops, sorry. That last sentence sticks with me, even though I cut it short. Uh, how, how we choose to wield hope. Right now, my hope is in these memories. You can do it, Isaac. I agree. I hope Isaac gets it done. Because otherwise, who am I going to go to Wisconsin with after this whole thing? For the cheese. Because he has he still hasn't told me what his favorite cheese is. What is your favorite cheese? I want to know. No matter what happens, this period of my life will be a time capsule. And one day, when it needs to be opened, people can see what really happened. I flip the conversation around and vocalize these thoughts to Isaac. I know it's going to sound ridiculous, but honestly, so does the fact that he's Hermes. Isaac, I've been thinking about something. Oh? Is everything okay? It's about that agent. I know I saw them. I don't know, Delta. We could go over Nathan. the footage together if you wanted. It's Nathan still. Uh, it wouldn't work. They're watching from afar. But you said they were right in front of you. Far away, as in watching me from the future. They're from the future! Isaac seems like a Swiss cheese kind of guy. Probably. That would make sense. How is that possible? I think it has to do with this new nostalgia technology. Have you heard of it? It's like the iPhone 16, but less expensive the ability to and more reliable. Past. I think in the future, they're investigating our lives. Magic. Yeah, it's magic. And I might be feeling some sort of weird after effect. Isaac sighs, signaling disbelief and even a hint of annoyance. I expect his next words to chastise me and tell me to get back to reality. I believe you. Oh, well, oh, 
Well, I'm happy about that. Now, I also have a real estate opportunity for you. Have you ever heard of a timeshare? I'm telling you, they're amazing. There's one here at the hotel. If you get it, you, you'll have the whole... Never mind. Huh? It makes sense. How? It barely makes sense to me. As well, the audience. It doesn't make sense, per se. It's just a logical deduction, given everything that's happened. Well, I mean, also, I could just be... Maybe it was those mushrooms I took. Did you think about that? Don't you remember what I said? I've been seeing things in the corner of my eye, too. Have you? I don't remember him saying that. He wants timeshare in Vancouver. Oh, yeah, he does, for sure. Nah, it's definitely not. Not the, not the mushrooms? Okay. And I know all about the nostalgia tech as well. It's been mentioned in a lot of internal emails. At your retail job. What does it change, though? It's not like they can do anything to us from there. Well... Yeah, I guess you're right. If they All they can do is watch it, I guess. Unless they can interact. Maybe not, but we can do something to them. In what way? Well, that's not true. I think Delta's not really thinking this through, because if it's already happened, then I can't do anything about it. Like, either all I can really do is proceed on the path that I'm already on. And in that case... It's basically the same thing. Like, there's really nothing we can do about it. We live our lives knowing what they'll view in our memories. We can leave behind any message we want. Any memories we want. Wow. Fancy a game of 40 chess, huh? Everyone's playing it. It's the new craze on the internet. He starts to think. I'm left in an awkward silence for several moments. Hmm. <sighs> The very flow of time would be our battlefield. Sure, something like something like like that. But I don't know. If, well, no, because it's already predetermined, right? And also, it still seems like the agent shows up when I when I decide to do something or try to do something to change what would have happened. That seems to be when the agent shows up. So I could. Well, I wouldn't know. How would I know when I'm trying to change something? This is interesting. Now he's getting what it. What should we do then? Make sure they know we're good people. How would that help us? Good people can still do bad things. Oh, yeah? You want to share with the, the rest of the room, Isaac? In fact, there's nothing more harmful than good intentions. We should send them a real message. Something substantial. All right, I'm in. Let me think about this, all right? Remember, we're going right into their HQ. If my sights could become evidence, I need to rethink my plan. Right. But it depends on how far in the future they're looking at it. I'm shocked at how quickly he's accepting my theory. Are you an insane? I don't know. Maybe. But how are you doing, Void Lord? Hope you're having a good day. But we'll see, baby. It's almost too convenient, so I ask him, hoping I don't come off as paranoid. Like I said, it fun makes fact. perfect sense. Lemurs are what you get when you take a raccoon. Doing and all right? All Good to hear it. I'm glad away. to hear it. It ain't I pretty. I live my life constantly experiencing memories of the future. Say whatever you want, but that's literally impossible. Yeah, it pretty much is. The idea that we'll be able to revisit past memories? That's nothing compared to the reality I face. Um, okay, again, you're getting a little bit too in your own head. Not everything revolves around Isaac, okay? Besides, it was only a matter of time anyway. Photos, audio recordings, video recordings. Of when you took your jacket off because you got them guns, baby. <laughs> you want to show us them guns? You just show them your guns and then they will be sh they'll be scared off in this no time. This just feels like the next step, doesn't it? No, your guns do. Show us them guns. Take the jacket off. Come on. Do it. Of course, it'll just be tainted by the hands of Argus. There's no way their motivations are self- I want to see his guns again. Me too, Jojo. We all do. But selfish motivations can only be fought with selfless hands. So I say we turn this around and put them in their place. Show them your guns. I nod. 
That's basically what I had planned. Of course, I really wanted him to open up to me. People in the future deserve to know who he really was. Because if they didn't, then Argus would fill the gap or fill in the gaps. And something told me they wouldn't see him as the hero that I do. Oh, more about me. Sorry, I guess I got caught up in the bigger picture. But that makes perfect sense to me. You focus on capturing the group and I'll do the rest. I know I can use this future technology against them in the present. Okay. How do you plan to do that? He sits on the edge of the bed and softly pats the spot behind, beside him. I jord him, and we look at each other with a smile. Of course, that can wait. For the record, though, I want to open up. Oh, he's got. If someone Boy Lord, you don't know. He's got. Doesn't change anything. He's got guns. Isaac's got the guns. If if he takes that jacket off yet again, you're gonna be welcome to the gun show. I'm telling you right now, it's it's amazing. If someone else is watching, I nod. Otherwise, this would be an interrogation. I can't force them to tell me their story. I only I can only ask them to open up willing. Thankfully, this group is bound to tr by trust. A trust that now reveals all our true natures. He better take it off again. I hope so. Let's see. Uh, let's well, see. What did I tell you last time? Your dad was an Argus legend. Right, right. And you were a master of tinkering with technology. I didn't know you were paying attention. I always pay attention. Unless it's instructions to a game, and then I conveniently zone out immediately. He smirks. Was that some sort of test? To you? To you? Well, maybe. I guess I can pick up the story from that part. You already know most of my secrets anyway. Yeah, I do. I know all of your secrets. <laughs> Rubbing the back of his head, he blushes softly. But first and foremost, I have to thank you. With those guns, I you gotta pay attention. I do, I, I gotta told you the pay. Truth. Well, I might, that might be all I'm paying My attention to. Cipher hasn't made me the most forthcoming. Yeah, that's probably true. I, and you know, I don't blame you for that. It'd be so easy to call me a liar and go off on your way. In fact, I can tell that Dante and Taylor were considering it. You learn a thing or two about reading people in retail. I just, you know... Okay, at least you're acknowledging it. That's fine. He nudges me playfully. It's true. He did tell us quite a few lies. But I can understand the need to keep those secrets. He had an exceptional burden weighing down his every move. It must have felt good for him to finally let out these secrets. So, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. You're big welcome. Big, big welcome. You basically know everything. But I can try to fill in the gaps. All right. Is that a euphemism that I sense? He tugs at the collar of his leather when jacket. When I was growing up, I always liked messing with Argus Tech. I guess I wanted to mimic my dad since I could tell he was successful. Right. That makes sense. Even though I was a kid, I actually helped him with his work. Oh. That's probably when he started to realize the potential I had. Okay. Well, that that's a good father-son thing. He can fill my gaps. Uh I was thinking it, but I wasn't going to say it, Jojo. I was thinking it. Didn't say it, though. Didn't say it. I remember fiddling with our security system. Ooh. You know. You can fiddle with my security house. system. <laughs> my dad started to be concerned with his safety. I don't know why, but... Uh, that's, kept don't pay attention to that, boy lord. System. It's a family-friendly family family stream. 100%. 100%. Nothing untoward to even talk about here. But that Nothing. test alarm terrified me, especially as a kid. So, oh. Like you might have guessed, I found a way to mute it. He laughs, like he's even surprised at how talented he was. Obviously, I got scolded. It as you should have been. After all. But as you should have been. I don't think we fully understand danger and paranoia. That's, that's why I'm here, Liam. And same, he can do whatever he wants to myself. Oh, God. We're taking this to places. We're definitely taking this to places. So then, he got a new security system. It was more advanced and more attached to the system. Theoretically, it wouldn't be possible for me to mute this one. 
in theory, but I'm but guessing in theory. I'm not the type to back down from a challenge. Okay. Sure enough, I cracked this one too. He was furious. Well, furious with a side of shock and awe, of course. Of course. Why wouldn't he be? Oh, it's going to give me great in just a second. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. True. That was an impressive feat for a child to pull That's up. That's where I stopped the story last time, right? Uh, yes. I don't remember. God, don't tell him, but I don't remember. I nod. Well, he upgraded the security again. This time, it was unreleased experimental tech. It worked, and passed all of his tests just fine. I didn't want to get in trouble, so I left it alone. Well, did you, though? Because that doesn't sound like you. But maybe... That's where things get really weird. One night, someone broke into our home. A rut row. And sure enough, the alarm didn't go off. Me, like I, I think you said something about taking off shirt back. last time. Last I time you should do that. In. Okay. They start. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, uh oh. Oh no! Is this how his dad died? Oh no! This is about to get sad. I thought you said it was supposed to get good, not sad. That's two different things, Jojo. There's one thing I'll never forget, though. The look on my dad's face when he told me to run away. He but obviously did you? knew that the security system was muted. Oh no. And in that moment, I could tell he blamed it on me. I couldn't defend myself either. All I could Yeah, that's why it's good. Oh god. Oh no. So you muted it and it got your dad so, murdered. Yeah. His final thoughts of me oh. will always be ones of anger. Oh no. He was innocent. It was his trust in the tech that hurt him. Well, 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 that's really sad. This is all very, very sad. So his dad was killed. I didn't expect to hear that. I'm pretty sure I deserve it. I disobeyed him every chance I got, after all. Isaac, come on now. This, you're, come on, buddy. Listen. You don't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. You, you were just a kid. You were doing what you thought was right. You're not bad. You're not bad. Is that why he works out so much? Maybe that's why he works out so much. Time I start listening to him. You know how cruel irony can be. Yeah. Well, Alanis Morissette doesn't because she couldn't figure out what that actually meant. If I ignored his orders, I would have opened up the tech. Then I could have fixed what was wrong with it. Defiance could have saved his life. But you were... Why would you? That's uh, you carried with me. You, you really since. take. Oh uh, man! In okay. fact, I'm using that defiance to save the zeros. But I can't you, just sit back and do nothing. Not like last time. Oh, Isaac. Poor Isaac. He's using his past to justify his current actions. But it's not just his current actions. Everything makes more sense. I suddenly see him in a completely different light now. He sells and installs Argus Tech so he can make sure it's done correctly. Otherwise, someone else might lose a loved one through a truly faulty device or glitch. He follows his father's footsteps because he feels responsible for what happened. I suppose if you rob someone of their legacy, you have to make it your own. Ugh, this is, uh, this is heavy stuff right here. I don't know about that. All of that stuff was so tragic. But then there's this vision. Devoting his life to a corporation that he knew would he'd end up defying? Besmirching the name of himself and the legacy of his father? No. That only happened if we lose. I know Isaac's gonna do the right thing here. Well, there you have it. Argus Tech is all I ever really knew. That's sad. My That's sad died, stuff. I went to live with his brother. That's really sad. But even then, I preferred working with technology. I didn't really make friends or bond with my uncle. Who's your uncle? He was mad that I kept this leather jacket. Said I needed to let go instead of carrying the past with me. But I know he was just projecting. It was a reminder of his brother. Probably. 
But it's hard for me to let go of this thing, Delta. It gave well, me safety during one of the worst moments in my life. When I was under that bed, it was all I had to wrap around myself. Oh, this is getting really sad. Oh my god. It kept me hidden. I lay oh. under that bed for almost 24 hours. I waited wow. until the police arrived, like I was taught. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's good. Oh. Isaac, buddy, ah, listen. Void listen. Lord 597. You gonna cry? Huh? I'll make Theo. you cry. Theo, come on now, buddy. <laughs> Theo's being playful. See what I'm saying? Uh, to do real, Isaac really wanted to please or uh, take off his jacket so I can cry into your big, strong arms. Oh, uh, I don't think he's going Those to. Flashing blue and yellow lights lit up the bedroom. Blue and That's yellow. When I knew it was safe to come out. Of course, Interesting. I came out to some bad news. Yeah, probably. He gives me a nervous smile. I hope that's good enough. No, that sucked. Everything about that sucked. I'm sad now. I'm very bummed. Super duper bummed. I place my hand on top of his, intertwining our fingers. Now it's... Now is not the time for thirsty. No, seriously, right. Oh, God. This was a lot to take in, but it made me understand him so much more. And he was going to be the man with the legacy. He'd want, um, he'd want this to be a part of it. You know, that was pretty cathartic. Gotta commend you for the idea, Delta. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. You need a lame to talk to? That's who I am. I'm here for you. And what's under that jacket? And if people ever listen in on this, well, I'm happy with the way I worded things. Good, because it wasn't bad. It was pretty well done. You could have maybe added a, you know, a more dramatic pause here and there, but I'm not going to fault you. I'm not going to fault you. It's important for the world to know what makes me tick, right? Every detail we hold back will be a detail lost to time. True. Maybe. I don't and know. I never want to lose what we have. Oh, are you talking about me? He places his hand on my cheek and looks into my I eyes. Let's talk about what shapes me and makes me tick. Ah, Jojo 57,957, boo-hoo. <laughs> Theo, kiss, kiss, kiss. Uh-oh, maybe, we'll see. That might be coming, but we don't know yet. We'll find out. He smiles and laughs, but it has a mischievous tone. Our love transcends time. Isn't that cool? <laughs> a real romance for the ages. Now, wait, hold on. Hold on. That might be true... And I think you're cute, but you also have never gotten my name right. I'm just going to say that he's never gotten my name right once. Theo, I'll fuck you up. Get over here. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think you want to mess with Theo. Who knows how many people might experience this? That nostalgia tech could turn all of our lives into a stage. You're right. They could. So let's work toward a standing ovation. You want to give him a real show? <laughs> We both lean forward and our lips lock together. I can tell, I, I can feel all of his, I can, I feel like that's supposed to be feel. I can feel all of his passion, but also all of his pain. His grip on my hand tightens and I can feel him tremble. A few moments later, the kiss is broken. He looks at me with glistening eyes and a wide smile. Remember. I know, I think it's things. fell, but I think it was feel. Remember, I can do that. Uh oh. Fade. Is it like a falling? Is it felling like a tree? Maybe, but I don't know. Okay. We're down to this last major thread. We gotta see what happens. Experience pivotal fragment. Possibilities. Let's make this rated R. I don't think you can. Well, we could try, but I don't know how. Learning to take your own advice is the greatest strength of all. Do it, or else you will be felled. You will be felled. <laughs> oh, we all sit back in the hotel room trying to relax. This might be the last time we get to do this. This is the real calm before the storm. 
Thankfully, we made it this far without any hiccups. And tomorrow, everything would come to an end. But do as I say, not as I do. Hopefully in our favor, but at this point, I have no idea. I can rest easy, however, knowing that all my friends have opened up. To anyone viewing my memories, I have no doubt. You know we're good people. I can't even say we're good people caught up in a bad situation. I've truly come to believe we're doing the right thing. We may not destroy Argus, but they need a reality check. They shouldn't have as tight a grip on the world as they do. It's immoral. Cypher can rise up and be the first to threat any uh, or to th or the first threat to a monopoly of Argus. I look forward to a world full of progress and innovation. It sure beats what we have. But are we doing the right people? That's a good question. That is a good question. You know, in all fairness, I think... If I really think about... It, have we... Have we slept with Isaac yet? I think we did, but I don't know. I know we've slept with Taylor. And I know we've slept with... Um, Chiron. But I don't know if we've ever actually, like had that full moment, unless that was implied there that we did. But I don't know. I actually don't remember like the actual scene with Isaac. So maybe not. But we did sleep with Taylor. I consider that a win, but we can go from where that is. I look forward to a world full of progress and innovation. It sure beats what we have. But for now, I take a large swig of soda enjoying the company of my friends. Friends, that's right. But now, we're also agents of Cypher. However, unwittingly. This is gonna suck. Well, maybe, but you don't know that, Taylor. You could be wrong about that. It's gonna be cool, actually. I'll finally get to show you the full extent of my skills. Doc, is it gonna suck? It might. <laughs> Taylor knows all about that. Putting Chiron in the system wasn't the full extent of your skills? Well, you probably should have put more effort into it if that was the case. <laughs> Not even close. Uh-oh. You, you haven't, I won't say if you do or don't. Okay, got it, got it. So we haven't yet. So it's a still will they, won't they kind of a thing. It's still will they or won't they. We don't know. Now I'm scared. Uh-oh. Don't worry, Dante. You're on my good side. Let's just make sure it stays that way. Anime 2.0 Lagoshi. Well, I think we did. That one we did do. I know we did that one. But, and Taylor. So, oh, there's that. Are you gonna tell us what the plan is yet? Are you? I can't. Sorry. No! I want to do it again? Okay. I have to wait until the time is right. A lot of this is on a need-to-know basis. Well, if we're all agents, it seems like we should be on the same page, okay? <laughs> Such a cliche line. It is kind of, actually. <laughs> He's right. I've always wanted to say it. Must have sounded so cool. I don't know if it did. Y you have to put the right inflection behind it. And I'm not sure you did that, so. Sure, let's go with cool. Right, super cool. The most cool, the best cool. Only the coolest. Taylor looks worried. I can tell that uh, the fear must be getting to him. So what do we do in the meantime? Oh, I can think of a few things. Well, tomorrow is gonna change everything. It's the last time we might get to do this. Right. What do you mean by this? What is this? Uh, we won't really know until tomorrow. <laughs> it was kind of an abstract statement. He just means the status quo is going to change. Yeah, that exact phrasing. Hopefully for the better. Hopefully. Of course. I have this down to a science. So how about we celebrate instead of worrying? Well, I think worrying is pretty justified here, but okay. Sure. Makes sense to me. We want to look Does back it on this though? as a happy time. In, even in jail, when we're all in jail, we're going to want to look back at this and go, that was the best day of our life. Speaking of looking back. Oh, uh, you talked to Delta 2? Yes, I did. Wait, you guys are going to... You guys are gonna bring me into this like that? Okay, what a segue. Uh, I guess I wasn't the only one. I get around. <laughs> if you haven't noticed yet, 
Isaac, I get around. We talked about what exactly? Everything. The past. Oh, we didn't talk. We were too busy. Oh, well, in that case, me too. Yeah. It's always important to look back before looking forward. Reminiscing is always important in the face of change. Yep. Yeah, the past is always set in stone. It's comfortable and familiar. It sure is. You know what they say, right? The safety of the past is the greatest treasure that we can never possess. Who said that? I need you to quote it. Now. I guess Argus is aiming to change that. Oh, yeah, you're talking about that. See, now you're going to talk about my thing, which is fine. But I still think that is happening. Uh, quote the MLA format. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Give me the MLA format. Show Just it in writing. Us in line. Uh, Super cheap booze and a glorified dream machine. Well, where'd the booze come in? We're going to put that. a dent in that plan, though. Without their monopoly, their control will be limited. I guess. But we'll always need the system. Competition only introduces lesser evils. True. Because I guess in this case, you'd be talking about, like, you know, T-Mobile versus Verizon, the system. At least there'd be options. We're going to experience the booze top shelf flicker. It's going to be all top shelf here in a minute. Argus can't keep things like this forever, right? If they have sole ownership, then they have sole control. And they might have soul for fish. I guess so. You get it? That's a good fish. I mean, we might be able to take that control away from them, but at the end of the day, Komarebi trumps everything. Except for Trump. Because he trumps himself. We'll never be able to compete with a force like that. Especially when we don't even understand it. Maybe they have soul food. They might. They might. Do you think we ever will? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Pretty sure we're screwed. We're going to go to jail. Doubtful. Especially when it's easier to just run and hide. This nostalgia technology is basically admitting defeat. But at the end of the day, it's still a new technology. That's kind of exciting. With how stagnant things have been. Okay. Sure. Right. We've all become creatures of this routine. I remember Isaac saying as much when we first arrived. But stagnancy goes hand in hand with control. Can't wait to see what happens when we open the floodgates. Me too. I love opening floodgates. You get that wheel, I'll get the other one. Let's go. Embracing my metaphor, huh? <laughs> nice. Yes. Isaac nods and smirks. A race with one person is pretty boring, right? They have no reason to push themselves forward. Well... I don't think that's what they were ever interested in. Throw a few more people into the mix. You can open my floodgates. Wire. Oh, if baby. Wins, then we're in trouble now. People will enter the fray. Right. As for what they'll create, I see unlimited potential. Unlimited power. I can't even find a way to stop Como Rebi. No. He I mean, really yes. So. No. I mean, I think anything is possible. But if Como Rebi benefits Argus, of course they'd want to keep it around. No! What's possible? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe more they will. People get a say. Uh huh. When you put it like that, I'm kind of excited. Okay. How do sure. you stop visions of the future, though? Aren't you stuck with them, even if you defy them? A little bit. I remember talking about that one uh, way, in, or I remember talking about that on the way to the nightclub. If you defied your vision, you'd still experience it all the time. In my mind, that changed the very nature of visions to begin with. What if they aren't visions of the future? I'd have to ask you to elaborate. Well, I can't. So, there's that. Oh, well, it's only the future from your perspective. Who else's perspective is there? Oh, I get what, it, I get what we're getting at. So basically, what if Kamarebi is the nostalgia tag... Yeah, see, it's complicated. So what I'm guessing is what he's saying is, what if Coma Rebi is a result of Nostalgia Tech because now you're seeing something that happened from your future. So it's like seeing the memory of a person who's looking at your memories, like it's feeding back and forth. But why would it be, uh, maybe that's that, your future self. 
Okay, now you're losing me. Yeah, probably. To your future self, it'd be a vision of the past. You only call the future because of the side you're on right now. I guess that makes sense. But what does it change? You plan to defy your visions and to stay friends, right? But to your future self, it's it's your present and the past is uh, that it's a vision of your past itself. Well, maybe, kind of, but to your to your future self... Well, no, to your future self, it's basically their past. So they're seeing... They're remembering a very powerful moment in their life. Ooh, see, this gets into some weird stuff, though, because, like... What we, what I, what I was proposing before is all of those corrective things, all like the, the weird Doki Doki literature club stuff that kind of happens in these uh, memories where it corrects itself. I kind of feel like that's the nostalgia tag trying to keep things on the right path. They're suggesting that they can alter their, their vision. But if, if, if Delta's right here, then that would be a vision of the past from a future, which means it's already happened. And if you change it in this, then that future never happens. So therefore, how could you be looking back on yourself at that point in time? Kind of throws the whole thing off. Ideally, yeah. Then it won't always be a vision of the future. Eventually, it become a vision of an alternate past. Does that really change anything, though? Well, yeah. If 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 you alter the future in which the person Thanks is the raid Astroscape. Oh my God! Lovely people. Oh, Astroscape. Thane, underscore, Thane underscore of underscore five. Thanks for hitting that follow button. Thank you so Welcome much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Happy birthday. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's my birthday, but thank you so much, Astro K, for the raid. That's so awesome. I appreciate you guys so, so much. You are cute. Oh, that's appreciative. Uh, how is everybody doing? Thank you guys so much oh, for stopping by. I really appreciate underscore, it. Underscore zero. Thanks for hitting Oh, my goodness. Oh, my Welcome gosh. Thank you, conspiracy. Blazer Zero and Mac Duff Thane of Fire. Welcome to oh, the conspiracy. Hey, Thanks for hitting Rinova. that. Nova. Wow. The Big conspiracy. thank you, everybody. Big thank you, everybody. How is everybody doing? He said to say that you're cute, but I'm not a, a sheep, so you're ugly. Oh, well then. Well then, I see your game. I see your game. But how is everybody doing? Thank you so much for the raid, Astro's Cave. Uh, let me give you a quick shout out real quick, everybody. Let me just bust that open here real quick. And there you are right there. Give him a give the love. When you die. <laughs> Did they even make this go? <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> There's a creeper! <laughs> no, it's not. But did you, I don't care. I don't care about the creeper thing. Did y'all see that shit? That was fucking hilarious. Do you want? <laughs> awesome! Awesome! Oh my gosh! Holy moly! That clip is so old. Oh wow! I have such a good, like, oh my gosh, you guys! I'm nude. I got nude. Sorry about that. The, the wind came by, couldn't stop it. It just kind of blew my clothes off, and there they're gone. I don't know what happened. Hey, Astro, nude. Skate, keep that horny in check, or I'll bop you. <laughs> oh, Theo, wait a minute. Glad I raided here. Anyway, welcome everybody. We're playing some uh, Kama Rebi. Uh, we're 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 kind of making our way towards the end. Thank you, everybody, so much for the follows. Rin Nova. Uh, Blazer Zero and Momon McDuff. Oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm like so happy I had to dance. Am I right? Apparently I need to dance. Ride it in my fear. You really have to see it. Six feet two in a Is Uwu a keyword for the it is, it is actually. Yes, it very much is. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna continue on our little adventure here with the boys over here, the boys of summer, and uh see what's going on. Yeah, it does. It does? How so? I don't know. Right now we're trapped on one side of our visions. The side where we see it as our future and nothing else. Okay. But Delta is right. I am? That's a first. When I live past the point in my vision, it'll just be an echo. Some weird memory of a past that never was. Oh, okay. And for some reason, I think that's comforting. I feel a bit more free when I think about it that way. You're right. It makes no sense, but I got it. I got gotcha. you. 
Uh, I but I was saying earlier, power like, power I don't think that makes sense because, that like, if it's... a pretty common theory, too. If these visions everybody's seeing is a vision from somebody in the future looking back at you and you're seeing a vision of their past by transference, then if you alter that vision, then there's no guarantee that the person in the future will be there to look back at the past in the first place. Therefore, you would never get that memory in the first place. So how would you live past that memory or change that memory? There's, it's a conundrum. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a paradox. It wouldn't work. Okay, so they're just visions then. Doesn't change how intrusive they are. I hate mine, no matter when it comes from. At least it might not come true. It's better to stay a vision than become reality. Yeah, but then if it already happened, then it has to become reality. I guess. Otherwise, none of this would happen. Okay, this is starting to make my head hurt. That's been your entire thing, Lagoshi. I'm just going to say, Lagoshi, you got to you gotta just take it slowly. Just, you know, if you need somebody to explain it to you, we'll talk real slow, okay? But if it means I might not be on a colony in the future, then I'll take it. Any bit of hope is better than what I have right now. What if you're the one using the nostalgia tech and you just don't realize it? But are you still looking back at your past self, even if you are doing it? Because I would imagine that's the case. Like, I imagine you're looking back at your own life, in which case that's how you get the vision in the first place, because it's some sort of, like, connection back and forth. But you have to be looking back at your old self to do it. I don't know. I guess you are, but you're seeing your past seeing it as your past self exactly but it's if you if, but if you go to your past self and see it and then you change that future then how would you know to give it to yourself in the first place you couldn't do that 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 wouldn't exist anymore so if it like if you change that moment in your life then that moment doesn't exist you can't have a memory of it in the future to give back to yourself at that point see it's a paradox you can't do it what if we want our vision to come true though I guess that's when this turns into a double-edged sword. Your comfort can just be someone else's work. Also, Lagosha, if you want a headache, if you want a headache, you should take a CS100 class where we use binary and electronics. Well, that would do it. That would do it. I don't think Lagoshi se seems like a uh, technical, technical minded at all. Feels okay. That's the question that end or that that the end of this conversation lingers on future or past the visions had come from somewhere another reality another timeline who knows it's an interesting thing to think about though if coma rebbe was an echo of another life does that mean this was my first i had no echo to witness after all could this life just become the coma rebbe of another me oh, okay so now we're getting into alternate timelines oh god this is marvel we're turning into marvel time travel here okay Maybe another is the is the what is it the the time, uh, time, continuance authority whatever they are in Loki is they going to show up any minute now? Is Loki going to show up here? I'm sure he can figure out what it means. Ooh, ooh, me, I don't know what that means. I don't even know what that means. In the hotel room with friends about to uh, infiltrate Argus HQ and oppose them. Um, if that was the vision I had as a kid, I'd probably do anything to oppose it. After all. I would see no merit in going against the powers that basically govern our world. So, in this exact moment, I feel happy and content with the lack of a vision. I truly live my life for me, not to avoid anything, not to pursue it either. Because if I had a vision, I may not be here right now. But after everything I've experienced, I know one thing. This is where I was meant to be. Speaking of which, the first zero indicates it's a zero, and then the rest I'm too lazy to solve. <laughs> Fair enough. And I got here with the ability to call all of my choices my own. I didn't follow a vision. No invisible hand guided me down this path. And hopefully one day, this kind of life would be the norm. The Void! The Void! We survived the Void, guys. It's okay. Everyone's fine. You're gonna make it. You're all gonna make it. Okay, so that's it. That's everything. I meant, uh, I meant positive. I didn't type out all 32 bits because it's no fun. 
Well, just wait till you get to the 64. Then you're gonna be totally screwed. Okay, so I think we're, we're heading into the last chunk or whatever it is, the big, the big finale chunk here. So let's, uh... Experience culmination fragment. Hermes Day. Isaac Day? They mean Isaac Day, not Hermes Day. Thank you for choosing Argus. Our future... Uh-oh, uh it's getting Doki Doki Literature Club again. They're doing Doki stuff. Thank you for choosing our future. Oh, God. My eyes slowly open, wrought with the temptation of closing them just a little longer. They flutter, almost in a state of conflict. If I slept, I wouldn't have to leave. If I slept, I wouldn't have to face whatever came next. There was a frightening part. We had no idea what was going to happen. Isaac, faced with the fact that he's meant to change the world, and all of us, now his willing accomplices, opposing Argus. How could you defeat a foe that holds the world in their hands, even if it was possible to loosen the grip they had on us? I guess I'd never find out unless I got up. I rise to my knees, yawning. I must have fallen asleep on the floor. Well, that's weird. 64 is for doubles and screw doubles. They're... There are, they're all their extra data from the, the IEE 64-bit floating bit damn electric engineering. <laughs> you lost me there, Jojo, but I appreciate it. You lost me. I'm too, I'm too dumb. I'm, I'm just a leem. I can't do the math. It's not possible. My diary rests beside me. One final entry after the stroke of midnight. One final entry. Reading the arrival of Hermes Day. I can explain it. Not... Not good, somewhat. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. You're getting there, though. You're learning it. That's the important part. Lightning strikes through the window with, with beams made more prominent by dust in the air. Isaac must have requested that nobody clean his room for our privacy. Handprints still mark the window, almost as they were a, were a longing gesture, appreciating the beauty of the sight before us, yet also uh, fighting to change it. Basically, a scientific notion, but in binary. No, I, I know that I get that part of it, but I just, uh, all of it goes beyond what I know about it, beyond that part. I understand, like, the binary concept of, like, you know, double, double, double kind of stuff. I get that, but, like, the beyond, like, actual translation. This conflict was in, uh, was present in all of our minds, only, uh, fought by our immeasurable resolve. Is this how people felt the morning of an important day? Well, not any important day. Perhaps the most important day of their lives. The temptation to remain in this moment of solace forever is almost too much to bear. I rise to my feet. My yawn, or my earlier yawn, interrupts the rest of my friends. The glances we exchange are ones of somber understanding. A quiet reminder that we all shoulder the same weight. Same, I hate this class, but to anyone who doesn't know uh, binary, I look smart. Well... That's, that always makes it, that makes it a little bit easier. I can, I can tell you that. That makes it a little bit better. Our role may not be as important as Isaac's, but it's clear that he can't do this without us. A flattering thought that my very presence can still, can instill him with the might that he needs. If we pull this off, everything would be better for the entire world. It's almost like the option to fail was taken away from us. In the face of what was on the line, we didn't have any choice but to win. It reminded of that conversation Isaac and Dante had under the stars back when we knew he, or before we knew he worked for Cypher. Back before I knew he was Hermes. I gulp, simply realizing that I have no choice but to push forward. The lances were exchanged once more, as if we all stared back, or uh, we are, were all scared to break the silence. Isaac. Dante. Place. Tyron. Taylor. Taylor? Wait. Where's Taylor? Isaac shoots up to his feet. The concern worn clear on his Taylor? face. Oh no, Taylor, no, please. Not my buddy Bunkins. No. We all look at each other, understanding every single implication. Taylor! No! He's not here. There was nowhere for him to be. The room was small, and the bathroom door was wide open. 
Yeah, not body. He left. Where is he? What happened? I don't know. Oh, I didn't mean to fall asleep. I was supposed to stay up and keep watch. It's not your fault, Isaac. You gave us all the option to leave, remember? But... Hey, check the group chat. We all take out our phones. Taylor's last message in the group chat simply reads, I'm sorry. Then... There's a notification that he's left the group chat. Oh no, Bunny Bunkins, no! Oh no. He left? Why? Cold feet? I can tell that Isaac is terrified. He looks at all of us with pure desperation. Another glance is exchanged this time. I can sense the temptation in everyone else. The temptation to leave like Taylor did. He was the first, meaning others might follow. Please? Uh, what? Are you talking to me? I should be here. I need you by my side. I don't know if I can do this alone. This was clearly a test of our dedication. Accepting the task, Chiron is the first to step forward. I have your back, Isaac. I owe you almost everything after all. Isaac smiles. I made a promise that I'd join your pact. Until the end, right? Until the end. Place nods as they both step forward. Then, all eyes are on me. Oh, and I... I forgot my clothing again. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to it. The wind, it was the wind. It just blew and it just... I, it's just gone now. I, I didn't pack any... I didn't pack any backups. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, I couldn't exactly ditch Isaac now either, especially after he told me his biggest secret. I step forward. My stance is clear. Without saying a single word... <laughs> Isaac tilts his head forward, or toward the hotel room door. And let's get to the lobby and see if we can find Taylor. It might not be too late to change his mind. We all nod and leave the room. Closer for the week, they are. It all dawns on me at this point. It's probably the last time I'll see this room. The farther I get from the window, the harder it is to see the handprints on it. Before we exit the room, it's almost like our mark on it has disappeared. Part of me wonders if we'll ever be able to get back to Isaac's house. The rest of me wonders if Taylor's safe, or perhaps already in the hands of Argus. Taylor, no! Bunny Bunkins, how could you? How could Bunny Bunkins do this to us? I kind of, you know, I will say this. I don't think they've done an incredible job of portraying Taylor in that way. Like, I don't think they've done an incredible job of making that apparent, but I, they were trying to. There were points where they're like, Taylor's scared, Taylor's scared, but they didn't really, like, show it in the way that he was acting. As soon as we reached the lobby, we remained close to one another. There was no point in separating now, just in case Argus got Taylor. I only say it like that because in all other words, we're too scary to Do use. Do you see him? No, you think it'd be pretty easy to tell. We all look around, but there's so many people here. Isn't the leader of Argus going to appear in only a few hours? I guess they're waiting until the last possible moment, like always. All of a sudden, blending into a crowd seemed to hurt us more than it helps us. We had no idea where Taylor was now that he ran off on his own. He said he was sorry, so it, it does imply that he left voluntarily. But almost anything could have happened to him after that. Isaac couldn't guarantee your safety if we didn't stick by his side. Taylor leaving in spite of that, Gurr said a lot about his inner thoughts. Isn't that one of his friends? Chiron tilts his head towards a small gathering of people. I recognize them. Some of them were um, at the little room party we had. Yeah, you're right. Uh, hold on. I'll go talk to them. Isaac starts walking away, but then turns back Keep around. Keep your eyes on me, okay? Now's not the time to slip up. Okay. I will keep my eyes right on... Take that jacket off. We can see the gun show. Just show us the guns. No one will miss that. No one will mess with that. Uh, we all nod and keep the watch as, head, or as he heads towards Taylor's streamer friends. Part of me can't blame him if he chose that group instead of us. They probably engaged in a lot less treason after all. Yeah, you know, the... Sometimes you just want a friend group that is, you know, 50% less treason. It is a lot less stressful. Oh, oh, okay. Hi. 
Uh, hi. We're doing the Doki Doki Literature Club stuff again. Huh? My eyes are drawn away from Isaac, despite his clear request. Isaac, give me something to look at. Apparently somebody did. I can see the Ar that Argus agent standing in the crowd. People pass by, obscuring them for a split second at a time. I keep expecting them to disappear, but they don't. Damn, the one time I can't ask my friends to stop and look. They need to keep their eyes on Isaac. Is this some sort of test? The agent gives me an evil look, looking smirk again, and I gulp. They're cradling something in their arm, holding it close to their chest. Wait, I recognize that sight anywhere. It's my file. Everything my counselor wrote about me. Why would they have that? Why, why would they want that? There's nothing of value in there. In fact, it's it's mostly lies. I never told my counselor what me and my friends were actually up Sorry to. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, hey, do you not see that right there? It's right there. It literally is right there. Hey. Kind of, kind of looks like a silhouette of Ahsoka Tano, which would be really cool if that was like, oh, it's like, oh, it's Ahsoka. Amazing. Um, I don't know, but you guys seriously know? None of you? Okay. Apparently, they saw him a few hours ago. He said something about doing what he had to do. Okay. That doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good at all, but also that doesn't look good. None of you. Okay. Does it That's just me then. Anything? It might if he is like going to the authorities. You never know. That's our friend, Chiron. Well, yeah. Yeah, but he we is. still have a job to do. Yes. That's right. Well, but nobody, nobody. It's just this thing right in front of my eyes. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe Dante has glaucoma. Maybe we need to see a doctor. I think maybe that's it. It's purely just glaucoma. Which one of us? Me, because I can't. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. My glaucoma's afraid. Ahsoka is trying to tell you something, but is stuck in the world between worlds with the boy. <laughs> yes, he is. Chiron. Uh, Chiron? Dante Scott. I hate this. I hate it. The clock is ticking. We need to go. Taylor or not? Taylor or no Taylor? We choose sure? no Taylor. I mean, Taylor... Oh, does this mean... Sure that we have no other option? Yeah. This isn't how I wanted it to play out, though. Oh, wait a minute. I just thought of something, though. Just thought... It's very convenient. It is very convenient that Taylor skips away all of the sudden. Oh, glad that he cleared up. I was worried that you would have to see an eye doctor, right? Yeah. No, I'm just saying it's very convenient that the leader of Argus is about to show up and Taylor's like, oops, you better go for a bit. And then just like, do you want to try calling him? Maybe when we're on the road. Come on. We can't afford to waste any time. Alrighty. Isaac starts to walk away. We all follow in his tracks. Taylor ditched us, saying he was doing what he had to do. The fact that he went right through to his other friends is pretty telling. I guess he just wanted back out before he uh, got in too deep. If this went wrong, it could completely destroy his career and public image. We can't really blame him for valuing the comfort of his regular life. As we head to Isaac's car, I contemplate the life I'm about to leave behind. Honestly, whether we win or lose, things would never be the same. We just need to play this smart and safe. I think we're well beyond that. <laughs> I think it's a little late for that. I think it's a little late for that. It might be just a smidgen too late for that. Just going to say. Oh, is this ending where it all began? Everything is happening a mile a minute. I can't tell. Uh, I can't tell we're all panicking. I can tell we're all panicking, except for Isaac. He knows the plan. But for some reason, he has yet to share with it, share it with us all. Perhaps he thinks that Argus could be listening in. I guess it makes sense not to say too much out loud. I wouldn't want to get docked for distracted driving anyway. I look out the window and I'm reminded for the day I've arrived uh, how different things were, how different they could have gone. It's almost like I'm living or leaving another life behind. The second one in just a few short weeks. This life was better than the one I left behind, though. 
I can only hope that the same applies to whatever happens next. If it went well enough, we could even be lauded as heroes. I gotta say, I kinda like the sound of that. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wee wow. I wish he had said that. This kind of, yeah, uh, because it descended. It distracted driving is so much better than treason. It's way worse, as I think is what they're saying. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. It's way worse, is what I, I would say. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow, we wow. I wish he had said that. I wish they just like went to Dante and he was like, wow, wow, we wow. The feeling of dread in the air. It's so thick, I could cut it with a knife. Are you writing a book right now? Because uh, we don't need that right now, buddy. I could open up a window. The attempt at a joke is admirable uh, in the face of such danger, but it's almost like a product of denial as we got closer to our objective. Either way, it was enough to lighten the air and deliver some optimism. So you want to tell us your plan? Yeah, give us the, the skinny. Could you give us the skinny? Yeah, you were supposed to tell us by now. The skinny is what he's supposed to tell us. I changed my mind. Sorry. Like treason is one thing, but talking while driving? Nah, you can't do that. If it was like, if they were using their cell phones in the car, treason would be nothing. It would be nothing. Just a, just a thought in the wind. Huh? Huh? I, I have no idea who's listening in on us. We shouldn't risk anything, especially so close to the end. Okay, this is getting really confusing. What if it doesn't go right? So we're just supposed to follow you into certain danger. Okay. Basically? Good plan. Uh, I think Dante just opens the door and just jumps out. Now he's like, no. And then Dante groans. Besides, it's nothing you haven't seen before. Oh, uh, are you? You're not going to get naked, are you? What is that supposed to mean? Yeah, are you going to? That would be distracted driving, Isaac. If you got naked in the car while driving, that's a little weird. I'm just going to say. It means I trust him, so you should too. Well, it's got me this far. Yeah. To treason. 100% to treason. That one FBI agent. Dang it. I was hoping he would be a villain monologue. monologue. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm curious how that statement got Dante to back down. It's nothing we haven't seen before. What does that even mean? Oh. I'm reminded of how Isaac has been messing with tech ever since I've arrived. Since silencing the system in his home and unlocking doors at will. So he is getting naked. Probably. There was even cameras in the house offering a trick of live feed in his workshop. He's been using his house as a testing ground for all of this. Suddenly, it makes perfect sense. Bend the rules without breaking them, he always said. That, and all buildings operate on the same standards, enforced by Argus. It stands to reason that the hacks in his home would hey, apply Boyd to Lord any other building. Hey, if you ooh-woo, you gonna get a boo-boo. Ugh, oh, Theo, come on now, buddy. It's not that bad. Isaac was planning to assault Argus digitally? Messing with their security and opening the doors we didn't have access to. It would certainly aim or aid him in his plan to create memories that compromise Argus. Bet. <laughs> Bet 100%. But basically breaks the number one rule in our entire society. Or at least the one rule we thought was the most important. In hindsight, a lot of rules exist only to solidify and maintain Argus reign. What were we do what we were doing might be for the greater good, but it still is dangerous. It looks like tools like these placed in the wrong hands could have an irreparable or could cause irreparable damage. I can only hope that Isaac never lets them see the light of day. Stuff like that could endanger us and others. Could be destroyed after today. You know, I don't. I really don't. I think I want to go to the beach. Right now? That's kind of Bad timing. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, after all this is over. Okay. If by beach you mean a jail cell, then I agree. I've never really been to one before. Or learned how to swim, for that matter. Then a beach may be a really bad idea. Unless you just want to go for a tan, which I have questions because you have really dark fur. And that's not going to tan very I well. I can teach you pretty easily. There's a pool in the rec center near my library. You have, you have your own library? Funny how you call it your library. Oh my god, Attack on Titan, right? Hey, I made my mark. Uh, uh, what does that mean? I'm actually thinking about giving back to them one day. 
Oh, okay. Good stuff. They basically made you who you are. Yeah, that's how it worked. I'd like to think my talent has something to do with it, but yeah. It's looking pretty run down lately. Could definitely use some aid. Well, if you got the money, might as well do it. Dante, did you pee on the books again? I That kind of sounded like what he was implying, but I don't know. That's a good kind question. Of poetic when you think about it. Maybe they'd let Chiron stay there in exchange. In the... In the library? Like, where would he sleep? On... On a pile of books? That's kind of weird. Maybe he could get his own place. You know, like, a house? With a bed? Right. Yeah, I guess I do need a house. It's a library. That's Don't not the same talk? thing. Yeah, you could do that. I've been known to try. You could always come on tour with me. I'll just tell them I want to do more tracks with guitar. Perfect. That'll work just great. And Isaac, didn't you see season four and you didn't want to do that? You're right. Wait, really? What? No fair. I want to go on tour too. You're going to be in jail. Let's so don't worry all about first, it. All right. Then we'll be able to do whatever we want. Okay. It's clear that everyone is conjuring up fantasies to cope. If we wanted to make them a reality, we'd have no choice but to succeed. Even if the fantasy seemed a little uncharacteristic, it was still something to hold on to. When this blows over, I doubt he'd be going um, on tour with Place. Library, house, practically the same thing. One has books and the other has debt. Well, they both have debt. They both have debt. A lot of debt. It's just uh, one has a lot more books, hopefully. He'd likely reunite with his colony friends and show them the city. Start to think about what he'd like to do, but then a car comes to the stop. It was a bit sudden, and I'm jerked forward, ending my daydreams. I look out the window and seeing a massive, majestic building. It towers almost into the heavens. A real, it's really beautiful. But I also know this is Argus HQ, and we're finally here. Isaac puts, uh, pulls into the parking spot and takes a deep breath. We're here. We're here. Uh-oh. He looks at each one of us with hesitance on his face. Are you all ready? No, no, this is gonna be, this is gonna go bad. It's gonna go horrible. It's, it's gonna go real bad. bad. Okay, I guess I'm ready too then. Same. I'm not. No, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what? Where's Taylor? I'm gonna go play video games with Taylor instead. Taylor? Taylor? You wanna play some Fortnite? That building looks so cool. That's your first thought? Okay. I give Isaac a nod and he takes out his phone. He's lost in it for a few moments, clearly doing some preparation. Whatever he has planned, his phone definitely seems essential. All right. It's time to finish this. Let's finish this. With a little spark, we all get out of the car. Just follow my lead, okay? I have everything planned. Down to a science. Yeah, but we don't know what it is. Chiron like, and this is where we're going to go when we get drunk and don't want to make make it a breaky. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's true. You probably could do it that way if you go to the right. But just don't do it in the, the computer lab. You know what I mean? Don't do it in the computer lab. Without another word, he starts to lead us into the building. It's completely dead and silent. Almost nobody is around. By now, almost the entire world would have had their eyes on Town Square. We enter the building. I'm immediately taken aback. Mortal Kombat voice. Finish them. Let's go! Finish them! I know I mean, you I'm still, all love me here. I'm still curious please, about... Oh, try to contain yourselves. No, really. I yeah, already felt nauseous computer earlier lab, today. Don't mix. Yeah, it can only cause you problems. Ah, uh, this is the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. It almost resembles Isaac's store, but on a much grander scale. Yeah, I would say so. This looks like something out of Mass Effect. Whoever built this place probably had no limits on their budget. We stick close to Isaac, who's tapping away on his phone. I'm not sure what he's doing, but it's clearly Isaac, important. are you sure we should be here? No, we should definitely not be here. Dante tilts his head towards a bunch of cameras watching the atrium. If everybody was looking, they'd know that Isaac didn't come alone. A group coming along with it for an interview? Definitely suspicious. Yeah, it's very of sus. Course. Uh, the cameras are on us. That's pretty incriminating. 
Probably. Trust me, you're fine. No, they're probably not. He tilts his phone towards us so we can all take a look. See? I'm here all by myself. What kind of... What kind of Photoshop bullshit is this? Wait, what? Uh, Second interview, remember? I'm feeding them a recording of the first one. If they're watching, they have no idea you're here. No, oh, that's pretty clever, actually. Well, they definitely know you brought us in. Who? Kyra looks over at the reception desk. Someone is behind it, tapping away at the computer. Actually, that was the only person in the entire atrium. Makes sense. Everyone was probably in town square. That, or in their office, glued to their phone or TV. Nobody wanted to miss what would happen. And that worked in our benefit. Great thinking, Isaac. Hold on. I'll take care of them. Okay, are you going to kill them? Did you bring a gun? Because if you did, that that's a little bit out of character. Use less ominous wording, maybe? I'll make sure they don't get in our way. That's not that much better. That That's really not that much better. That was a minimal improvement. No, it really wasn't. Better than nothing, though, eh? No, it still sounds like you plan to murder them. He smirks and starts to watch, walk towards the desk. I want to watch him, but I'm distracted for a couple of moments. The atrium is so amazing. The sunroof really sells it, though. Those beams of light piercing through the trees. Isaac's definitely going to kill them. He's going to murder them. He's literally going to walk over there. He's going to pull out. He's going to be like secret agent Isaac and just pull out like a silencer or gun and just shoot him and then just be like, all right, guys, let's go. Hey, do you guys want to stop by the gift shop? And he's just going to let me just clean this off really quick, but I got to get a new T-shirt. It's clear that the design choice was intentional, but it did have a deeper meaning of any sorts. To me, it almost seems like Argus or screams Argus home of Komarebi. Definitely adds to the conspiracy theory that they were the cause of the visions. Couldn't be, though. Right now, even the nostalgia tech is just a concept. They could never have engineered Coma Rebbery, Coma Rebbe a century ago. Or maybe he'll tie them up. Maybe. But that's what he's that's what he's been telling me is going to happen on the weekend. Of course, Coma Rebbe defies all logical explanation. Pew, Isaac, sorry, I was watching Star Wars, totally didn't shoot anybody, <laughs> right? The future is impacting the way almost everybody lives in the present. Normally, cause and effect would dictate that it's the other way around. But things don't seem to work like that in this world. Hmm. Is it possible that the true cause of Komarebi hasn't even happened yet? As confusing as that is, it definitely makes sense. I remember that we talked about it in the hotel room. As you get older, your Komarebi is destined to become a vision of the past. Well, not the past, but an alternate one. Interesting to think about. Part of me wonders if this nostalgic technology has anything to do with it. Technology de dedicated to cracking open the past and allowing interaction. There's no way that I could go wrong, right? I decided to watch Isaac instead of losing myself in thought. He's engaged with what appears to be friendly conversation with the receptionist. I have no idea what they're talking about, but everything seems to be going fine. It's a little easier to breathe, too, knowing that those cameras aren't capturing me. A little ironic in the face of some of my theories, but comfort is comfort. I see the reception stand up from the desk and go to a room behind them. Isaac then turns and waves at us before pressing the button on his phone. The door immediately shuts and we hear a locking noise echo through the atrium. He walks back to us and we hear the receptionist banging the door trying like to get I out. Like I said, I could technically make it work on any door. Well, now... Now it's really suspicious. <laughs> I don't know how he's going to explain that one. He's going to go like, ah, I don't know what happened. The door just locked. It's amazing how those things happen. Who knows? Isaac, are you stupid? Let them out. Whoa. Whoa. Dante. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that might be the first time we've ever seen Dante with that kind of face. Whoa. Isaac, that's called torture. Yeah, seriously. After we're done. We can't risk anything, Dante. Follow me. We need to keep this moving. They're safe in there, right? Ah, uh, well, except for the gators, the live gators and piranhas in the pool that they're, you know, as long as they don't move, they'll be fine. Yeah, it's just a break room. Dante is overreacting. Hardly. It was against their will. Well, I mean, 
He, yes, but also what was the alternative? He was either going to do that or shoot him. They have food and they can still watch the town square. Every TV in this building is going to be streaming it soon. Isaac shrugged. What did you expect me to do once we were in here? Ask them to march me down to the server room? His plan was probably to shoot him, but he, he realized his gun was unloaded, so it's too late. Dante shrugs back, admitting defeat. Uh, so that's where we're going, I guess. Yep. Onward and forward. But first, I need to get back to that computer. Which one? There's probably a lot of them in here. Isaac runs back over to the reception desk and we follow him. He climbs over the counter and jumps to the other side. Taking a cord out of his pocket, he plugs his phone into the PC. Isaac, what are you doing? Need to plant a few seeds. That's a weird. This is a weird time to do that. We shouldn't. We, sh we shouldn't do that in front of the others. Gotta say, I'm pretty lost here. Okay. Ah, uh, me too, actually. Him. I was gonna kill them, but since Dante said not to, I'll just trap them. Yeah, good plan. You're safe, right? Maybe. I think so. I don't think we know that. I don't think we know that at all. You'd think right. You, you know, you say that a lot. Isaac starts typing. An impressive display of speed. The receptionist is still banging on the door, begging for us to let them out. Please remain calm. You're actually more safe in that room, okay? You say that a lot about a lot of things. I'm not sure if that's true. The banging stops for a Nobody moment. Nobody is getting hurt today, all right? That door is set to a timer. It'll unlock in 30 minutes. Just relax and watch the broadcast of the town square. The banging stops altogether. Okay, but what seeds are you planting? I need to give us all admin access. The server room is deep underground and super classified. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold, hold the phone. What? It's underground? Underground. Okay, this is, if you come out, I'll shoot you. He might. But seriously, though, underground, are we really doing this? We're going to say, oh, yeah, it's totally underground. This thing is really, really, it's deep underground. Deep. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're not. It's deep. Here it goes. Dante sighs and holds out his phone. Fine, but make it quick. Oh, I don't need your phone. Huh? Why not? You've given it to me plenty of times. He presses the enter key on the keyboard and unplugs his phone. Jumping back over the desk, he just smiles at us, and he's accomplished an impossible task. A moment later, all of our phones go off. I take mine out and look at it, giving it to... Listen, he's given it to him plenty of times. You... Listen, okay, I've said this from, like, the beginning of the game. These two have definitely hooked up. It didn't work out. You can tell that it didn't quite work out, but these two have definitely hooked up. Maybe more than once. Probably many times. Definitely many times. What was that? Check your phone. It's not... It's probably in your pocket. You should all be able to take the elevator down now. But oh. we still need to take care of the other employees. Why do we need to take care of them? Probably regularly, like nightly, probably. But I, I'm guessing it didn't work out entirely, but I think that's definitely a thing. What did Isaac say to Dante? You've given it to me plenty. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need to focus on. You've given it to me plenty of times. Whatever he did, apparently he set it up a while ago, but my phone went off as well. Wait, when I visited you at work? Yep, pretty good excuse, huh? Had to leave my lunch at home on purpose though. You planned that? I okay. Hold on. I don't. I'm starting not to trust Isaac. You're a sneaky, sneaky little little bastard. Like seriously, he's kind of a sneaky little bastard. You prepared all of our phones for this. Saves me time from doing it now, especially since we're gonna be on the clock. Thirty minutes, right? The receptionist, yeah. But there's more to come. Okay. He presses a button on his phone, and suddenly the atrium is dark. Isaac must have killed the power. The sunroof only slightly illuminates my surroundings. But a moment later, everything turns back on. What was that? Isaac, I... 
He is immediately cut off as the alarm starts blaring. My heart basically stops. Did we trigger some sort of security? Oh, this is it, isn't it? This is where we get caught and locked up. He's killed the power just like the receptionist. The receptionist is still alive for now. The announcement comes over the loudspeakers. It's telling everyone in the building is compromised and they should seek, seek out a safe room. It's in repeat over and over and I start to see people run around. Suddenly, the atrium is bursting with activity. I uh, probably should have mentioned that this was part of my plan. Isaac, God damn it! Okay. He laughs like it was funny. His confidence is infectious. I'll give him that much. Nah, that's a speaker he didn't want you to know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a speaker? He just put like a, he put like, he did the whole like cassette tape thing in there, you know? Like the old 80s cassette tape trick. Like the Kevin McAllister playing like the videotape on like the cassette thing. It's like that, except it it's better. Here, follow me. It's time to blend in for a little bit. Okay, so by blend in, do you mean run around like in a panic and pretend like, oh no, the place is compromised. We gotta go. We gotta run. We better, better be, ah, we just better panic mode. You know, just like that. I think that's what we're going to do. Isaac, we're going to be so stealthy by setting off the alarm. Seriously. Uh-oh. He also brought the void. The void. The void. Oh. Well, we follow Isaac deeper into the heart of Argus. Everyone around us is panicking, mentioning Cy how Cypher is attacking. I am here. I know you You keep showing up and it just, it really just throws us off. You know, we're just like, oh, where did we go? And then I'm like, the void, the void Lord. You did it. Now we're in a hallway somewhere. But I suppose we look unassuming since we blend in with minimal effort. Place is kind of acting scared or I, at least I think he is acting. Either way, it helps to match the others as Dante attempts to comfort him. I regret getting him involved in all this. Some hiatus, huh? The voice on speakers is telling everyone to get uh, to a designated safe room. I can see where everyone is running. A room on the left sticks out like a sore thumb. It's clearly their destination as we all, as they all pile inside one by one. Their destination, but not ours. Isaac uh, sticks out of his, his arm, stopping us in our tracks. Void Lord is always uh, appearing when you least expect. Exactly. Exactly. You snake a snake over there. I see. I see your game. I see your game. A few remaining people behind us rush forward and enter the room. Isaac looks back in the direction of where we came. No one else is coming. Uh, that must have been all of them. For some reason, I expected more people to be in the building. Hold on. Just a few more seconds. Okay. He lowers his arm and we look at each other. Like he said, a few seconds later, fear of ruthlessness and an almost uh, fanatical dedication to the Pope. Oh my goodness. Why aren't you running? I feel like we should be. We should just be like, like, you know, just getting out there and just going for a jog. The door to the safe room shuts and locks. Oh my God, Isaac, what are you doing? Isaac, what are you doing? Oh my God. I think, I don't know if I trust Isaac anymore. I feel like there's reasons not to trust him. Lots of reasons. Perfect. Perfect. You've trapped him like rats in a maze. He points to the elevator at That'll the end of the hall. That'll take us to the server room. Okay. Isaac's going to get killed. Isaac, someone's going to get killed. He probably is going to get somebody Wait, killed. how'd you do that? You didn't even touch your phone. Oh, that wasn't me. I rewrote that code, though, and used it on the receptionist. These doors should open in 30 minutes as well. He starts walking towards the elevator and we follow. Notice how the alarm stopped, too? I repurposed that to mod our system back at home. Ah, mm. mm, 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 mm. Uh, mm, mm. Um, this is getting, this is turning suspicious. There's something wrong here. He presses a button on the this elevator. This is stuff that keeps the employees safe in case of an intruder. It guides them to a safe room and locks them in until it's safe. And that was all the employees? 
Yeah, probably. Not even close. No, not even remotely. All the hallways shared the same design. Everyone just ran to the nearest table Wait, they could find. That seems like you modded the HQ first. Yeah, it seems like he seems like he modded everything before we got here, which seems very suspicious. The elevator door opens. The opened. elevator will sense that there's five people inside. We'll need to scan our phones in order to go down. It's a good thing we got admin access. We all enter and scan our phones one by one. I'm really impressed with how well Isaac has thought this all out. We could see it, what could easily go wrong, seeing he see, or has seemed like a smooth sailing so far. I say so far because I have no idea what, what awaits us below. In fact, I had no idea what Isaac was, Isaac was going to do once we got there. It doesn't matter though, I'm sure it's good. He's bound to succeed. His entire life has been centered around modding Argus tech, especially security. Opening and closing doors, locking them, triggering alarms is all second nature to him. Makes perfect sense that this is that the, his mastery and training all have led to this. It was his calling. Specifically the his though. I think back to what he talked about in the, in the hotel room. Creating memories that could harm Argus in the future while we're, while we're in their HQ. If we're ever going to come in handy, it would be down in the server room. We'd also create memories that corroborate his own. Capturing him wouldn't be good enough. They'd have to come for us all. We could hold these memories as ransom as we were ever in danger. He could have known about this all along, right? I only told him about my theory the other day, after all. Either way, one fact becomes very clear. There's nothing more powerful than a memory. As the, mem as the elevator begins to descend, I wonder what memories we're about to create. Oh, that was another. There's a lot of typos in this last section. <laughs> there are several typos so far. Might want to check that out, guys. There's a few typos in there. How do you hold memories hostage? I don't know. I'm not really sure where they're getting at here. I, ooh, okay. We're, this is the server room. That. This looks familiar. Why does this look familiar? Didn't we have like a vision like this? Like, wasn't one of our like freak out moments? Wasn't this, this, this right here. This is what I'm seeing right behind me. I feel like we've seen this before. I feel like we've seen this before. The server room is almost black while everything is pulsing blue light. It almost looks like the room is breathing and it's a little unsettling, especially since I was looking at the system, a shackled AI that governs our our points and runs all of our devices. I remember my counselor telling me the story of how it came to be. Isaac immediately runs over to the available computer terminals. They must um, they must be hooked up uh, directly to the servers and the AI. All right, just hang tight. The I'm hanging. Take a few minutes. Hanging tight. Just gonna hang out right what here. Should only take a few minutes. Oh, okay. It's almost like Isaac doesn't even hear him. He immediately takes out that cord and connects his phone to the computer. All right, then. Dante scans the room. Oops, the I didn't mean to do that. Look like this. Definitely feels like they were going for ominous. Well, I do feel like we've seen this before. I feel like we've seen this room. They totally pulled it off. Place looks scared. He's looked that way all day, in fact. So this is the system? The system. Part of it, yeah. They have an HQ in every major city. They're all linked, though. Spreading them out just saves space. Our phones all have the same clearance level, right? Yeah. Isaac talks like he's super preoccupied, almost not even paying attention. Oh my god, the system. I'm gonna go use that other computer, then. Why? Oh, yeah, you want to look up your family thing. Sure. Isaac uses another cord and hooks his disk drive up to the computer. I look over at Dante, and it looks like he has no idea what he's doing. The difference in skill, skill between the two of them is really highlights Isaac's prowess. 25 minutes left, by the way. Don't worry. We'll have plenty of time left to spare. There's really nothing I can do, so I stand there and watch Isaac. Place paces around the room, clearly anxious. Chiron just taps his foot in the doorway. We were at the heart of Argus. Isaac had access to everything on that computer. Whatever he was looking at, it was flashing really fast. 
His eyes were wide open, completely glued to the screen. It was almost like blinking every, even once or would, would be too much. The flashing was clearly windows being opened and closing in rapid succession. There's no way he could read or even comprehend what was on the screen. Yet the pace of his typing implies he does. It's a sight to behold. Rip Dante trying his best. He's just like, um, the, the computer just wired there's something in here. I don't know what I'm doing. He's just like, ah, uh, control, alt, delete. Isaac, what are you doing exactly? One sec. Okay, one. He keeps typing and I start to feel bad for asking. Whatever he was doing seemed to require the highest levels of concentration. But a moment later, the screen stops flashing and he sighs in relief. Sorry, I needed to focus. But that's phase one out of the way. How many phases are there? He looks at me and he smirks. Totally uncharacteristic smirk. It looks kind of evil. Or perhaps sly is the right word. Like he got away with something. Dante returns from the computer he is using, looking irate. Are you going to tell us what's going on? Starting to get some weird vibes, Isaac. Or just like Marvel. I, yeah, oh god. He's, is Isaac turning evil on us? Yeah, I gotta say I am too. He unplugs the disk drive and holds up waving at us. The gesture that gives us gets our gives our immediate attention. Every single classified file in their database, including digitized records of stuff as far back as the 1940s. Uh-oh. He places it down on the table and thuds and a loud thud echoes through the room. If they had something to do with Como Rebi, it'll be in here. Whether they caused it or used it for their own gain. He goes back to typing away. Isaac, are you serious? Well, it seems like he is, very much so. You're really gonna take them down, huh? Well, if there's if, unless he like gets in there and just like, we didn't see it coming either. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Are you sure about this? I'm not. I'm starting to feel like Isaac might be losing it a little bit. Absolutely. But it wasn't really part of my plan. I just couldn't resist the temptation. Then what is your plan? What are we doing here? I what is the plan? One word in particular, though. Back in the 1940s and even today with the nostalgia tech. Ah, uh, okay. So that is what's happening. Because the nostalgia tech implanted the ideas... And Kama Rebbe came around because they it's a circular thing. They created Nostalgia Tech. Nostalgia Tech creates Kama Rebbe. Kama Rebbe is informed by Nostalgia. You know, it's a circular thing. Panopticon? Panopticon? I don't know what that is. Panopticon? What's that? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, but it was tied to almost every classified document. Okay. You shouldn't have done that, Isaac. We Anything shouldn't you have done your target on us. Uh oh. What? It can get bigger. Yes, it can. You want to see? Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm not joking. Neither am I, Dante. I've made up my mind. Okay. You can't have files like that, Isaac. You're gonna get us all killed. I thought you were just here to. A second later, all the TVs in the room turned to static. There wasn't a lot of them, but a couple lined the walls. As if following suit, our phones vibrate shortly after. I take out my phone to look. Ayo? Ayo? What's going Ayo? on? I don't know. I think we all just got the same notification. Oh, it's the town square. 20 more minutes, Isaac. 20 minutes? You got so much Watch time? Watch the report then. I shouldn't be much longer. What are you still doing? What is the plan? You don't want to see it? I don't. I don't know what he's planning. I'll hear it. Well, maybe. He keeps typing like his life depends on it. And due to holding such a sensitive drive, maybe it does. I looked it up and it's some kind of weird surveillance thing. Basically, think Big Brother. Okay. That would make sense. That would definitely make sense. I could see that. But not just for him, but perhaps for all of us as well. I turn my attention towards one of the TVs on the wall. So the leader of Argus is about to appear for the first time. And not only that, but we're on the clock. Time is running out. Just who were they? What were they going to say? My eyes are glued to the TV, much like Isaac's are to his monitor. 
We all wait in anticipation as the camera cuts to a short shot or a shot of the town square. If it's Taylor, <laughs> uh, if it's Taylor, I'm going to have so many questions. <laughs> Taylor walks out up there is like, what's up party people? It would be hilarious, but I would have so many questions. Oi, Tay Tay, I know, right? The crowd is buzzing with activity. This whole crowd of one person. Um, it's almost too loud. I'm sure everybody's getting out their last minute theories on what's going to happen. I have no idea what to expect, but I also don't think it matters. Standing here in the server room with Hermes, I knew that things would go our way. And because of that, I'm certain that all those zeros would be getting their phones. Just like Chiron, they'd no longer have to uh, have to write the or have the right of city life taken away from them. I can see a limo being escorted by several larger vehicles. Vehicles. That must be the leader of Argus and their security detail. The noise of the crowd almost immediately dies out. All we can hear right now is the sound of helicopters like additional security. It makes me wonder if they're expecting violence of any kind. Our camera focuses on vehicles as they all come to a stop. I don't know what that was. Oh, okay. Out of the larger vehicles uh, exits a copious amount of armed guards. One of them takes or his out takes this as a sign of aggression, simply a statement of caution. Tensions were high, and this was the first time the leader appeared in public after all. They open the door to the limo, and someone exits. The entire world must be watching this right now. I can almost feel it. The collective aura of anticipation is almost as exciting as it is terrifying. They step up to the podium and lean towards the mic. Cameras start flashing as a furious pace as the leader scans the crowd. This exact moment would forever be etched into the history books. Ah! Greetings, citizens of Toronto and to everybody watching around the world. It's Markiplier. Thank oh you. God, it's Darkiplier. Oh, it's the, the thing that keeps showing up. It's, it's freaking Ahsoka Tano. Uh, I have come here to oh. address the tragic Hi. events that transpired last week. Our deepest condolences go out to everybody affected by these deaths. Hi, who are you? What happened was not our desire or intent. It was completely avoidable and entirely my fault. Okay, who are you? So they are going to take responsibility. Loyalty through fear is not how any authority should be held. When I inherited this company, I intended to earn your respect. We should work together in pursuit of the greater good. This is the goal that I both strove for and failed to achieve. I wasn't expecting this. I'm going to be honest with you. Was not expecting this person. Don't know who this is. Very confusing, but kind of cute. I'm just going to say very cute character design. Just going to say that. I can't see her. You can't see her. She's right there. Oh, shit. Hold on. There you are. She gulps as if choosing her next words very carefully. I stand here bearing the weight of your derision. But it is a weight that I carry alone. Okay. She's a character from Major Minor, and I won't spoil anything, but I say she bombed a press conference. Oh, interesting. I I, I, I should wood? go check that one out. I should definitely go check that if out. If a woodchuck could chuck wood. I don't know, Theo. Know. You tell us all about it. I know the leem and the chat can't do math. Well, that's not entirely true. But yes. Loyalty through fear creates the byproduct of inaction. It is this very same inaction that calls Did someone say would? Maybe. Loss of life. Maybe. Jojo 57957. Go directly to Horny Jail. Now. <laughs> Get over there. You better do what he says. It was clear that many of you were too scared to help out. This fear of Argus actually compounded with our own stance on the Zeros. It was a recipe for disaster, but it is also a recipe for change. 
And that is where Hermes comes in. Right now, he is standing in our Toronto HQ. It's likely oh. that his hand is hovering over a button. Oh. What? Oh. Wait. Uh. Okay. Well, I guess everyone in the room knows that Isaac is Hermes now. But it's almost like they were too engrossed in the speech to care or even react. This button will introduce chaos into the order that Argus maintains. However, since this order caused the loss of innocent life... No, <laughs> Theo. Field. The Nagy Leem is mine. Oh, okay. I see how it is. We recently came to learn the true identity of her. <coughs> oh, there it is. Oh, these back. Listen. On the sorry, lady, lady. I'm sorry. These last lady, years. listen. This is not this is not my doing. The wind. The wind came back. It's just the wind again. Oh no. The wind returned. There was nothing I could do. Very embarrassing. In addition to that, he has also stolen a large amount of Argus drones. I believe his plan is to use these drones to cause a distraction right here. How do they know this? Oh. Did Dante do that? Oh, money don't jiggle jiggle. <laughs> I'm, trying to make, I'm trying to make a serious boy here. I, <laughs> I was about to make a serious, I was about to make a serious point. I'm about to make a serious point about I think Dante did this. I really do. Oh no, my dancing. It's because I figured it out. <laughs> In this momentary <laughs> confusion, phones will be handed to the zeros. Phones Distract them, Liam. I'm working on it. I do my best. Loaded with new legitimate identities. Okay. This means that the crowd before me is largely made up of agents of Cypher. I have not come here to stop you, no. In fact, I have come here to welcome you. Okay, how did you know all this if- I believe that me and Hermes share the same goal. However, my parents and grandparents certainly differed in their views. Okay, what did they think about it? Unfortunately for me, their values course through the inner workings of Argus. As progeny of the Founders, I am made to suffer much like the Zeros for choices outside of my control. And even worse, against my will. Is this like a trick or something? Something feels weird about this whole thing. Due to this, I now have the loss of two innocent lives on my conscience. This has made me realize that Hermes- Void Lord 597. Sussy wussy. That is what I was thinking. You are pretty sus. <laughs> Theo, come on now. She seems like she's heard this from some group and made it up. Maybe, but she's pretty spot on. Perhaps it's time to take a step. Hey, no, I'm not sus. Well, others step forward. Theo likes to stir up the to pot. The you know what I mean? To those who will change it every single day, as he said. Because of this, I must circle back to something I said earlier. Hermes is about to introduce chaos into order. So if I could speak directly to him. Hey, Isaac, I think she wants to talk to you. Do you want to talk to her? Isaac, over here. You want to say something? Okay. I'd just say, be certain you're prepared to face the consequences. Not just you, but to the entire world. This is a risky move. Yeah, probably. A little bit. She's trying to put some pressure on Isaac, make him realize the true scope of his actions. Knowing that, will you still press the button? Press it. Press it hard. After that, the most awkward silence I've ever heard overtakes the town square. I don't know how any or what any of us expected, but the but it definitely wasn't that. A full surrender, taking all the responsibility? It's admirable, even if it happens to be some sort of elaborate PR stunt. I mean, what else could she have said once the camera started rolling? Of all, all those eyes on you with the expectation to act a certain way, now she knows how everybody feels under the Argus rule. As if following her direction, we all look over at Isaac. Would he press that button? I don't know. They're not going to show me. They're literally going to leave me in the dark on this one. Isaac? 
What you gonna do, buddy? Where'd you go? I lost him. His finger hover, hovers above the enter key. He clearly is deciding whether or not to set his plan into motion. I can't even begin to imagine how much pressure is on his shoulders right now. The leader of Argus was right here, or was right. He was about to introduce chaos into order. His intended outcome was good, but is that how it would play out? Until he followed through, I guess he'd have no idea. And that must be the terrifying part. Looking at my friends, they all seem to, or they all seem locked in fear and anticipation, especially with Clay, who looks particularly shocked. Isaac lets out a deep sigh and closes his eyes. He's muttering something to himself, as if it were a mantra. The culmination of his life work is right within his reach. It's admirable. Then, he opens his eyes and looks over at us. A hint of worry and doubt he wore on his face soon replaced with a smirk. Whatever he said to himself has clearly provided him with resolve. Well... So much for those watchful eyes. He presses the button, and a second later, all the lights shut off. Even the pulsing lights in the servers turn off, as if they were dead. I'm immediately concerned for Taylor's well-being, but remember he's not Isaac? there. Isaac? Yeah, Isaac, what did you do? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? That's a good question. These are good questions. I make sure to stand still. I don't accidentally bump into anything. I removed the shackles on the system's AI. What? You freed the- Oh wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold the phone. Everybody hold- hold the phone. Everybody just- just- just stay right where you are. Don't move. Don't anybody move. His plan was to set free an AI and that is gonna help. Yeah, I was seriously, he literally just enacted furry terminator. There's literally going to be like 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 werewolf terminators coming after Isaac who's apparently John Connor apparently I don't know what's going on here. This is this could only go bad. You what? Yeah, you exactly what you said. More power? That doesn't sound like a good idea to me. No, it don't. It sounds like a horrible idea. Wait, I know exactly what he's doing. Last time there was an unshackled AI. It's actually a perfect idea, Chiron. It'll be overwhelmed with data and terminate itself. Okay. So you're gonna kill the system. Well, that seems to be the plan. Not before bringing it back. With a couple homemade mods, of course. Oh, okay. You're kind of gambling on that working. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a, it is a, a risk. There is definitely a risk here. Too bad the TVs are off. I wanted to see what you did with the drones. Mod it till it crashes. So basically introduce one mod into Overwatch, right? Or, yeah, just like Skyrim. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much. Just a few more seconds. All right. One, two, three. Okay. Three. Oh, okay. My bad. You started the other way. One. Oh, yay! As if on cue, all the lights turn back on, including the TVs. Much to our surprise, however, nothing has happened to the in town square. Everybody on screen exchanges confused glances. Probably a big booty mod. Oh, God. Well, that would be hilarious if that was the case. <laughs> I didn't do anything with the drones. It was just a ploy. Even the town square was a distraction. Just like I said. Great. Isaac. What did you do? Hold on. It should happen in a few more seconds. This is it, everyone. The moment of truth. And that's not how data works, Isaac. It's just ignore the extra data. Computers are stupid, so they can't do anything with extra data. Yeah, it. he's just like, oh, this NFT will just work the way it's supposed to. Silence. Silence. More silence. But then, all of our phones go off and in unison. Yes! It worked! How does that indicate that? We all take out our phone. There's a notification on mine that says, Welcome to the system, Delta. What? Aren't I already in there? It's the same notification I signed up at, or when I signed up as a teenager. But this time, 
There's some sort of file attached to the notification. Wait, wait, what is this? It's the blueprint I use to get you into the system. Okay. Why do we need this? Yeah, why do we need it? Why do we need it? It's not just you. It's, oh, he rewrote everybody? Oh my god. He tilts his head towards the TV. Everybody in town square is looking down at their phones. Isaac smirks, and that semi-evil smirk again. Uh-oh. Anybody with a phone can now help out a zero, just like I did. And because of their monopoly, good boy, such that's a good boy. Well, That's me. I am. <laughs> Brickface, hi. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the head pads. That's very kind of you. Everybody. Everyone. Everyone. Hey, Lord 597, this lean ain't gonna move it. Move it. He can't. Yes, I can. I definitely can. I can do whatever I want to, Theo, goddammit. I'm a little shocked, actually. Isaac was operating on a global scale this time. Ah, the goodest Leem. Maybe. 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 <laughs> I assume most of you have a spare phone or two? Why? Why do I have yeah, that? Just upgraded before Delta arrived. Oh. Oh yeah, Theo, watch this. What is you gonna do? Isaac, well, start. Oh, there I go. It folds. I like to see you wiggle, wiggle, for sure. Maybe want to dribble, dribble. You know, riding in my Fiat, you really have to see it. Six feet two in a. <laughs> Fair enough. That does work. That does show you, Theo. That does show you. Anyone in the same situation can now give their spare phone to a zero. In fact, there's probably more spare phones lying around than we'd ever need. I'm almost in disbelief. Turn everybody against Argus. Make them favor the Zeros. Then, give them all the power to change the world. Looking back at the TV, the leader Argus is being evacuated. What if my spare is just broken? Yeah, there's probably a lot of people who are like, it's got a cracked screen, but you don't care, right? I guess the this one fell in the toilet, but it's, you know, it still kind of works. Like, you just have to watch out for the 9 button. It kind of sticks. Uh, I guess the town square was was the least of their problems. There was a bit of anger on their face before the camera cuts. Isaac stops trying and finally leaves the computer behind. Wow, you really are a prodigy. Isaac scoffs. Nah, I just have too much time on my hands. Probably. That's probably true. But now, Argus isn't the only entry point into the system. I'm gonna turn Cypher into the first true competitor. You think the world powers would allow that? I don't think they have a choice. Well, they probably would actually, so I don't know if that's true. Once you introduce chaos into order, all you can do is find order again. And the playing field um, is exactly where I want it to be. Okay then. You still should have told us you were Hermes though. What? And ruin the real reveal? I knew. I knew. Everybody, I knew. <laughs> I knew. He scoffs, and we all look at one another, as if uh, to rob us of our victory. However, Clace looks terrified. He has his back pressed against the servers and is almost crying. None of us noticed until now. You okay, Clace? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That... That was her. Who was her? What? Y you mean the leader? Uh... In my vision, she... What? He cuts himself off and immediately runs towards Isaac. Placing his hands on Isaac's shoulder, he shakes him as he speaks. Isaac, we need to go, now! Huh? What is going on? I know, I was planning on it. We still have about six minutes. Well, we better go, that's not that long. No, not just from this building. We need to start driving and never come back. Why? What had happened? What is going on? You're starting to scare me. You're scaring me. I'm frightened. I'm very sc I'm scared. That's the wrong one. I'm scared. Ah, I'm really scared. Like super scared. Look at that. Look how scared I am. I'm super scared. It's amazing. No, I'm going to go just with the, I'm going just with, well, there's so many faces. There we go. I need you to listen to me for one time. Whoa, whoa, right now. whoa, whoa, Clace, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa there! Just take it down a notch. 
He runs towards the elevator and presses the button on it. I know, Clay's chilled, my god. We are we were leaving anyway, so we really have no choice. But I've never seen him act this way before. Did he recognize the leader of Argus? All of a sudden, I'm reminded of his diary. That figure with long hair. Was that her? The elevator opens and we all gather up inside. Isaac places on ha his hands on Clay's shoulder and looks him in the eye. Clay, everything will be okay. I'll get in the car and drive. I know right. why he's acting like this, but not having the context is kind of scary seeing it. Yeah, it's pretty weird. It that was uh, that was a hell of a face right there. Clay nods while trembling in fear at the same time. As the elevator begins to ascend, the fear transfers to us all. I'm starting to piece it together in my mind, but one fact is clear. This might not end well as we thought, at least not for us. I, I'm really struggling to remember like what I read in the diary 100%, so I don't 100% remember what that sequence was, but clearly it was about place and like, wasn't it like um, the manager? I'm trying to remember what it was. I know that, that he had a manager that died. Maybe this person has something to do with that. When the elevator door opens, it feels like we are entering a new world. Well, we basically are. What did I what Isaac did, it changed everything. The world would be helping zeros in mass, not just Toronto. I remember them theorizing, theorizing about this in the group chat. The government would have to step in and regulate the system. Argus didn't own it anymore like they had for decades and decades. It belonged to the world now. New companies, new competitors, new innovations. I think the next few decades decades would bring dramatic technology advancement. If we lived to see it, that is. Clay still looks terrified as we exit the elevator. I can only assume that his vision involves some sort of tragedy. I'm not the, and not only that, but the tragedy involved the leader of Argus. The elevator door closes Clay's. behind us. Yeah. Wanna tell me what's going on? Yeah, you wanna you know, share with the rest of the room a little bit here. You might want to tell us what's going on. It's just... Well? That's the first time I've ever seen her. What do you mean, the first time you've ever seen her? It's the first time anyone has seen her, Clace. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think anybody's ever seen this person before, Clace, so you might want to be a little bit more, you know, forthcoming with this. No, that's yeah. not what I meant. I don't know what what you mean. His shout echoes through the hallway. I've never seen him quite so bothered before. Place, explain. Yeah, please, just say it. Just say it. Hey, Isaac. What? Yeah. The tension in the air is thick. This isn't the right floor, is it? No. Oh, we look around the room and realize that he's right. Our concern for Clace must have overtaken anything else. Isaac immediately turns around and starts mashing the elevator button. It appears several floors higher than we need to be. What happened? Uh-oh. Chiron looks down at his phone. Four minutes, Isaac. I'm trying! I'm trying! If time runs out, the lobby will be full of security guards. The leader gave away our location and... I said I'm trying! Oh, there's the heart attack. Look again, he's mashing his button, but nothing happened. The elevator might be coming, but it must be far, far away. What about the stairs? Not enough time. We're too high up. Okay. What else are we supposed to do? Just wait, it's coming! Three more... Before he can finish, someone shouts freeze from the end of the hallway. We turn around, greeted by the sight of a security guard holding a revolver. Our hands immediately rise up as we were all locked in fear. They take slow steps forward, aiming the gun directly at us. I guess we didn't lock all of the employees away. But even so, we were running out of time. If we survived this, there would be an army of uh, greeting us at the atrium. Breaking the tension in the room, Clay steps forward, pushing us you aside. the TV? It's over! The guard takes another step forward. Clay spreads his arms like he's defending us. Others might be see, might see bravery, but I see someone who's almost embracing death. Put down the gun! Take out your phone! Another step forward. Are you just gonna kill us? There's that face again. Holy shit. Another. Why? Because it's your job? Well, you might want to be a little bit less threatening. I'm gonna move out of the way here, but that's very threatening. Look at that. Oh, God. One that more. doesn't sound wrong to you? Killing innocent people to protect your boss? Well, he, they are security guards, though. 
Yeah, Clay's is literally gonna mantra him. Just gonna. Arr, 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 arr. Well, then go on! Do it! Kill more people in the name of Argus! Just like those two in the town square! Ouch, that's harsh. See how well that works out for you! Well, I don't think they want to kill anybody. The guard looks down at their sight, ready to shoot. For a second, it seems like time stands still. They could easily kill all of us. I see their finger reaching for the trigger. A second later, a loud cracking noise fills the hallway. We all wince and look around frantically to assess what happened. Uh-oh. The security guard falls to the ground, clearly knocked unconscious. <laughs> Did you miss me? What? What? Wait, hold on. What? What? I almost started a fire. <laughs> what did you do? Oh no. What are you doing here? And how did you get in? That This brings up a lot of questions. How did you get in here? Taylor stands there, tapping a baseball bat against his shoulder. It's cracked. He definitely didn't hold back on the guard. Did you just murder the dude? You cracked a baseball bat on the back of their skull? I think Taylor just murdered a dude. I'm pretty sure Taylor literally... Taylor... Jesus Christ. My body pillow was against the heater and I didn't realize until it started to burn. Now my room smells like an... Oh my God. Jojo, oh my God. Also, Taylor, I think you just straight up murdered a dude. We all run towards him and greet him with hugs and cheers. We're like, yay for murder. Yay. Yay. Oh, God. I think Taylor just murdered a dude. He just laughs, returning each hug as we head back to the elevator. Isaac, you're lucky there was actually a bat in your trunk. A few seconds later, and you'd have been dead meat. You know me. When have I ever lied to you? Yay, murder. Hooray! Oh, trust me. Hooray! So what do you say? <laughs> ready to get going, Hermes? No, pretty sure, um, pretty sure you just murdered a dude. We can't be seen with a murderer. As if on cue, the elevator door opens. We all rush in, and Isaac presses the button to take us Thanks, to the lobby. Taylor. I don't know how much longer I could have stalled them. You saw me, huh? Not at first, but yeah. I really thought they'd shoot me. I hate to say it, but we can't celebrate just yet. A beeping sound comes from Chiron's phone, and he holds it up. Looks like time's up. Time is up. Uh-oh. That's a big uh-oh. A loud banging noise that causes my ears to ring, making me panic. The panic is shared. We all look around frantically, and then I see it. The security guard wasn't... No, that security guard's... That security guard's dead. He wasn't fully unconscious. As the door closed, they took the opportunity to fire one shot. Isaac immediately stumbles against the wall, clutching his shoulder. Oh, no. How? Taylor cracked a baseball bat against his head. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Um. Ah. Uh. He looks down in disbelief as blood trickles through his fingers. Then he starts sliding down the wall, falling to the floor. Isaac! Oh no. Here, help me get him up. Um. Dante and Clay immediately reach down for Isaac. They help him get to his feet, wrapping one of his arms around each of them. He seems a bit delirious, but he's not passed out, and it didn't seem to be like a fatal we shot. We need to go. We, yeah, we definitely need to go. I'll get you to a doctor. What do we do that? That lobby is going to be full of security. Uh, well, maybe we just, uh, we, I don't know. We have to try talking ourselves out of this. I don't think that's going to work. There's no way. That's not going to work. Remember what Isaac promised. Get I looked away for a moment. Yeah, right? Here. Well, but we, there's a security problem place. Remember, there's a whole thing. What happened? Um, uh, apparently, the guard somehow survived a cracked baseball bat to the back of the head and then shot Isaac, apparently. We need to get Isaac to a hospital. Besides, you haven't even explained why you're freaking out. Good point. Please. 
Trust in Dante. Get to the car and drive. Isaac grunts in pain as the elevator begins to descend to the lobby. But where? You need medical attention. I know where. I know exactly where to go. There's a first aid kit in his trunk. We can use that and just run for it. We can go to my colony. I'll show you the way. We'll never be able to pass the walls. We can. Huh? My car. I hate the what I know could stop the disaster, but I can't tell you for reasons. <laughs> you know, right? It's how I went. As Hermes. Isaac shrugs away Dante's arm, letting Clay slowly, slowly prop him up. Grabbing Dante's hand, he guides it. Uh, he guides it to the wound and applies pressure. Don't worry, Don't worry about me. About me. Okay. Just, it's in so many it's stories. Something. I know, right? I feel like Clay's is definitely needs to tell us what's going I on think here. This is it, Isaac. There's no way we can fight our way out of that lobby. Yeah. See, one one guard who should be dead. Uh, has apparently stopped us already. No, we can so talk our way out of it. Like I said, it's. I'm in. I am it's confusion. Really the only we have. Well, I guess we're gonna try and talk our way past numerous guards because the one guard worked really well. How? I t well, Taylor, we're gonna leave that one up to you, buddy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dante reaches into Isaac's pocket and pulls out that drive. This is how. A bargaining chip. What's that? It's. Before Dante can start, the elevator comes to a sudden stop. This time, we arrived at the lobby level for sure. Whatever greeted us, it seemed like odds were not in our favor. Talk our way out of this, gets Isaac patched up, and escaped to Chiron's colony. How does the saying go again? All right. Out of the frying pan, and into the void! And into the void! <laughs> Apparently... Oh boy. Well. Oh, see, it's empty, guys. We had nothing to worry about. There's nobody here. As soon as the door opens, we make our way into the, to the lobby. However, we sight the sight we see or we are greeted with is far from pleasant. In fact, it makes me feel the exact opposite of how I felt uh, when I was here before. At first, I was stunned by the beauty, potential grace, and majesty of Argus. Now, all I see is Argus flaunting their strength against people simply fighting for their ideals. Dozens of armed guards line the lobby, holding up rifles at us as we exit the elevator. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, goodness. Um, They tell us to raise our hands so we comply. Thank you. Thank you so much. Compliance through fear? That's just what the leader of Argus wanted to avoid. Yet, here we stand, our lives in the hands of those... Who came directly to oppose. I look at Clay's who continues to hold up Isaac. It's clear that the wound wasn't fatal and he'd be just fine with some treatment. All we had to do was talk ourselves out of this and it seemed like Dante was up to bat. I'm going to take a few steps forward. Please don't be alarmed. Wait. It's... This is just what Isaac did on our R&R &R campaign. Dante is trembling in fear. That sounds dangerous. It's very dangerous. As he takes those few steps, the light shining down from the sunroof strikes the drive in his hands. It almost exaggerate, exaggerates it, suddenly grabbing the attention of the guards. We anticipated a greeting like this, so please hear me out before you make a decision. Yeah, hear him out. Let the dog speak. Um, Fun fact. Well, at least the Argus Lemurs people are aren't get U.S. cops now. They'd already be dead. And take all of their best qualities away. He gulps. It ain't the pretty. lasers from the guns focus solely upon him. From the sky, we can hear a chopper. It looks to be from uh, the one from the news station. They have a camera pointed down through the sunroof, filming the entire ordeal. That must mean we're being broadcast live around the world. Now, everybody would know who we were. That's terrifying. Dante seems to realize he can't use, um, he can use this against you the guards. You see what I'm holding in my hand? This is a drive full of Argus's most classified documents. The guards immediately change their stance like they're ready to fire. Wait! 
If you kill us, you can retrieve the drive, sure. But this isn't the only copy, so listen close. We sent copies of these files to several Cypher computers. Did they? If any of us die. I think they lied. I think he's lying about this. To leak them. Oh, good. Do we have the approval? <laughs> I don't think we have any approval at all. Clearly a bluff, but the guards lower their stance. So if you shoot, every secret you tried to cover up will come to light. And not only that, but you'll murder us in front Speech of the Speech 100. World. Yeah, right. Dante tilts his head up, reminding him of the helicopter's presence. A world that you already know has turned against Argus. How do you think they'll greet you when you go back outside? Uh, probably with a hello. I look behind the guards and notice the gathering, uh, gathering in front of the building. People must have rushed here after the leader fled the town square. And to make it even better, I can hear them cheering on Hermes. Put down your guns and let us leave. I've seen some of these files. It's not worth it. Dante takes another step forward. Whatever you think you're doing, whoever you think you're serving, it's not right. Didn't you hear what your leader said? You can't hold authority through fear. Another step forward. Although, your job is to enforce Argus's rule. Are you scared of losing points? Is that it? <laughs> Insubordination. It's probably a little too late for that. Always looking to pass the dirty work down a few levels. Well, if it's points you're after, go ahead and shoot. But just know that everybody is watching. It won't matter what your score is anymore. Is Dante trying to get shot? I think he's hoping that they'll back down, but I guess we'll see. We can all hold each other accountable now. Argus isn't the only path forward. It never was. I don't think that comma makes any sense. We've but, given okay. power to the people. You can either be with us or against us. Again, not sure that's okay. He holds out the drive. So I'll ask you again. Please lower your weapons. That one's fine. Don't cling to the remnants of her power. Because Argus will be held accountable for everything they've done. And your actions will decide whether you go down with them or rise with us. His final words echo through the atrium. Wow. Talk about a rousing speech. He did always have a way with words, though. I can sense the, the hesitation in the guards, a sheer apprehension. They're just waiting to see who acts first. The rest would probably follow suit. Dante. Don't worry, I got this. Do you though, do you though? He turns his attention back towards the guards. Don't make me ask again. We can go outside and greet the new world as allies. Well. Uh, the next few moments feel like an eternity. I can feel my heart beat faster and stronger than ever before. And right, now, I know that my friend is all feel the exact same way, unified by our fear that this may be our last few moments alive. But like we always said, if we go down, we'd go down together. That's what really mattered, that we all had each other's backs until the end. Kablam, blam, blam, blam. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, what? Um, hey, oh, Void Lord then, 597, keep that horny in check, or I'll buy go. I don't think that's what he meant this time, but maybe one of the guards lowers their weapons, then another, and another. Soon enough, our hostile greeting has reached its end. The guards move aside, giving us the freedom to exit the building. You did it! You did it! Yay! You did it! Yeah! I'm a bit surprised myself. Place and Isaac step let's forward. Get to the car. We've yeah, let's to get to colony. the car. We gotta go. We gotta get out of here. Time to go. Right. Right. Let's do it. We start uh, taking slow, cautious steps towards the exit. The crowd outside is still cheering out Hermes' name. One of them must be zeros from the town square. A lot of them must be zeros from the town square. I think you have a bit of a welcoming party, Isaac. Isaac simply smirks as we leave the building. The crowd goes silent upon seeing the group. It's almost eerie. 
all their smug faces, it's all very seductive. Yeah, I think a lot of these faces are meant to be that way, but they had to reuse the assets and the, to make it part of this whole thing. I know that most of these people are zeros against uh, and agents of Cypher. Maybe some of them have got to just be like normal people. Isaac waves at them um, as if to signal that he's Hermes. They are seeing their leader, not champion and champion for the first time after all. The rigorous cheering is now met with happy smiles and knowing nods. A reminder of the night we left the club and Dante dropped that booze. Everyone stayed far away from us, scared to approach us and interact with the Zero. But now, they're all together in unity. It's impossible to tell who belongs to what group. Well, I guess there weren't groups anymore. That was the point of all of this. The crowd moves aside, giving us a clear path to Isaac's car. At least it appeared to be the clear path. Standing there, staring at me, is that child. They smile at me, and I do the same thing in return, just like before. It's almost like they knew I was special, right from the beginning. Despite the circumstances, they don't see any hint of grief in their face. They stand, surrounded by city folk and zeros, in a new world their parents fought for. A new world that, even though it may be hard to believe, was created by us. Our victory ensured that the deaths of their parents wouldn't be in vain. I can, and I can see from their look in their face that they understood this. An understanding conveyed without words, or like our entire bond thus far. The child realizes that they were standing um, and shakes their head with embarrassment. Then they run off to the side, fully opening a path to the car. We can't waste any more time, so we rush inside. Taylor opens the drunk trunk and puts the murder weapon back inside. I can see him uh, retrieve the first aid kit and a bottle of booze. Of course, Taylor's like, oh, I got to get drunk right now. Dante gets in the driver's seat and Chiron, the passenger seat. A moment later, we were off. Myself, Taylor, and Clayser are left to patch up Isaac in the back. I guess our destination was Ty Chiron's colony, an escape from Toronto. You good to lead the way? I'm not. I have no idea where this is, so you better tell me. Yeah, let's go. Okay, you have probably a better choice for that. Okay, then. Off to the colony we go! On the road again! As we drive down the highway, I recognize some of the sights. We passed these places when Isaac picked me up from the airport. That almost feels like a lifetime ago, though. How different things you were. You good back there, Isaac? Yeah, he was shot. So no. There's a bullet inside of him. So no. Yeah. No, you're not. Here, you gotta take off that shirt and jacket. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, that's one way to deal with the gun show. Put on another one. We all guide him to... <laughs> out of his clothing and get a better look at the wound. The highway makes things a bit shaky, but I think he'll be fine. Did take it out? What? Oh, you mean the bullet. Yes, that you should do. The other thing I was thinking, no, don't. Wrong time, place for that kind of thing. No, too risky. We'll have to patch him up and leave it inside. Um, phrasing? Risky how? It's a bullet in the body. You don't mess with shit like that, Taylor. We could do more damage and infect it. That's definitely taking a look at something. I think everybody is right now. So we have to stitch him up in a moving vehicle. Pretty cool, right? You do, <laughs> Taylor. Call it even for ditching us. <laughs> well, that's kind of kind of harsh. <laughs> They're just like, Taylor, you're a doctor, right? Or you've probably played Surgeon Simulator. <laughs> you've probably fine. done it. Okay. Go for it, Dr. Bun. Dr. Bun Bun. He grabs the bottle of booze resting beside him. Here, Isaac, use this. Just drink, drink up. Isaac opens up the bottle and takes a massive swig. You know, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, I meant pour it on the wound. Oh, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> there, are, You guys are a bunch of alcoholics, so I'm pretty sure one way or the other it's going to uh -oh. work. 
Isaac turns the bottle upside down, pouring several shots worth onto his body. Hopefully it's not expensive. Oh, that is nowhere near as fun. Ow, that would hurt is a lot. Gonna work? No. Also, yeah, drink, drink it too. Drink it too. Do both. Just whatever you need to do. It might. I saw it in a movie. Here, let's get that kid open. Isaac grabs that hurt. Blaze grabs Isaac's shirts and holds it over the wound. So just stitch it up and dress it. Should be easy enough. Have you ever... I mean, you've definitely played Surgeon Simulator, right? Uh, you might want to look away. Who, me? Isaac taps my arm and holds up his hand. I grab it and squeeze it tight. It was definitely going to hurt. Please, talk to me. Why, Clace? I'm right here, too. Huh? Oh, good idea. Keep his mind occupied. Okay. You gotta tell us why we're doing this, man. Isaac told us to trust you, but why? A grip on my hand tightens as Taylor starts to stitch him up. I try not to look. It wouldn't be pretty sight after it all. It was the leader of Argus. I recognized her. Okay. Uh, well, that much is clear, so I don't think you need to re-explain that. And from where? Yeah. Your vision, right? Yeah. The one you took all the music from? Well, that was just a benefit. What actually happens in my vision is... Well, I'm backstage, alone. And this woman comes up to me and... Well, she... He grabs his scarf and tugs on it, tightening, tightening it slightly around his neck. That simple, almost comical gesture was enough for us to get the idea. Mm. Yeah. By the leader of Argus? Wait, the Argus leader kills Blaze? What the heck? Isaac, you have got to destroy that drive. If you don't, she'll come after us. Okay. <sighs> Isaac, seriously! Can you please stop bickering over there? I'm only well, performing surgery right now. <laughs> okay, first of all, you can't just destroy the, the drive. You have to destroy the drive in a way that she'll know you did it. Because otherwise... She's just going to think you still have it. They seem to be enough for Dante to stop. Since I read Clay's diary, however, I understand this even more. In his vision, he's killed by the leader of Argus. That's unbelievable. And not only that, but had a business card of the Vision Protection Program. He must have thought that the program could help him escape his fate. But when the entire corporation was run by his killer? Well, I guess it felt like there was nowhere to hide. Except for maybe a zero colony. I can't even imagine what he's feeling right now. The only program that could help him was owned by her. Almost explains why he was so willing to take the bullet for us all. He clearly thinks there was no way to avoid his death now. If anyone wanted revenge against us, it would definitely be her. Isaac's grip tightens on my hand before slightly letting, finally there letting go. There we go. Now let's get him in a new shirt and bandage him up. Well, let's not be hasty not be hasty. There's one in my messenger bag. Just be careful. It's one of my favorites. Well, we don't have to. We can just leave it be. It's fine. Everything's fine. Don't be hasty. We help Isaac into a new shirt and then Taylor wraps him up. Uh, they, we, he both looks and sounds a lot better than mere minutes ago. Grabbing the bottle of whiskey, he takes another large <laughs> swig. Uh, I earned this. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to let you let you have whatever you want to drink. Hopefully it's good whiskey. If it is, can you pass it over? I'll take a swig too. It's fine. <laughs> you sure did. Yeah, you sure did. We all sit back and let out a collective sigh of relief. He doesn't need a shirt. No, he doesn't need one. It's fine. Isaac would be fine. Oh, <coughs> neither do I, apparently. Apparently neither do I. Holy cow. It got chilly in here. Oh my gosh, my poor nipply nips. We'd have to find a... we just have to monitor him. Let's get back to this leader thing. Yeah, let's do that. She wants revenge or something. It doesn't seem like it. In fact, she seems sad while she's doing it. It's gotta have something to do with that drive. Especially since you mirrored the files to a bunch of other servers. Oh. Uh, that was a bluff. <laughs> Oopsies. Oopsie poopsie. I guess we didn't do that. Taylor seems shocked. A bluff saved our lives? Well, you know, sometimes that's all you got, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Had to take a page out of Isaac's playbook. 
He did a good job in that final standoff with the thorns. Well, except for the dagger part, still don't agree with that one. We just need to destroy that drive then. They'd have no reason to come after us anymore. Especially now that the entire world knows our faces. He seems proud as he says that, like the exposure would help his career. It's a lot of info to throw away though. I mean, every secret we've ever wanted to know? It's not worth it. You still have to do it in a way that she knows you did it. Right. Because <laughs> if you don't, she's never going to believe you. That seems to be the note that this conversation ends on. We clearly had to get to safety and destroy the drive. Doing so, it seemed, would prevent Clay's vision. But now, almost everything about Clay's made perfect sense. All the booze, the tranquilizers, the gummies he started to consume. He was using drugs to try to suppress that, his horrible vision. I actually can't blame him. Being forced to live your death almost every day? Ugh, I'd seek almost any form of relief with my, within my grasp. Even... No, I don't even want to think about it. We could protect him and make sure it doesn't happen. Of course, he'd still have to live it almost every single day. I start to panic just from the thought of it. I grab Isaac's hand and squeeze it as if it's as if trying to console okay? me. No, no, we're on the run from the law, apparently. I clawed, I, I nod, clearly a lie. Just take a left up here and keep going straight. Oh, okay. Do we have to do anything special to pass the wall, Isaac? No, just go straight on through. You modded your car to do that? No, it's just old. We sit in silence for the rest of the way, letting Isaac rest and relax. Beforehand, going to a colony meant that you could never return. But now, things have changed. I think we'd be allowed to go home. So the goal was clear. Wait out the trouble and destroy that drive. Hopefully I could talk to my friends a little bit and hear how they're feeling. The raid on Argus HQ shook us all up. Everything, everyone is acting fine. A little while later, the car comes to complete stop. The sun had set, and I had no idea where Let we are. You get out first. I'll start a fire. You're probably not used to this kind of cold. All right. We'll wait until we see it. And wait we did. Wow. This is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh my goodness. I thought this was like the ending of it, but I guess... Oh, this is pretty. Look how pretty this is. Look how pretty that is. As we exit the car, we all take a collective breath of fresh air. For some reason, it's the freshest air I've ever experienced in my life. As we start walking, the fire, the warmth is our immediate destination. Feels like the danger is dissipated and we're actually safe. Honestly, that was a long drive. But I'm glad that we're finally here. Good thing Isaac's car let us pass through the wall like that. An even better thing that Chiron got the fire ready. Wow, this place is beautiful. Oh, we still get a little bit of the gun show, so that's nice. Why Why did you... Why, hey, I have a question. Why did you wrap... This is the end. You get one more heart to heart with everybody. Okay, cool. Um, why, why the bandage on the outside of the shirt? Anybody want to explain that one? This question here. Damn, Isaac looking, uh, looking, looking in that outfit. Yeah, he's looking pretty good, but he, I don't understand the, the bandage on the outside. That doesn't make any sense. That's what I thought when I saw the city for the first time. Uh, you know what they say. Normal for you can be life-changing for someone else. Eh, well, maybe. Life-changing, yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Do you think we were followed? Probably. I'm gonna go with yes. 100%. Definitely not. I would have noticed. Oh, okay. Well, just contradict me, Isaac. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Weren't you busy being in pain? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Only slightly. I mean, it was a gunshot wound. I imagine you're still in pain. There's no way he's not Trust in pain. Me, though. I know how to tell if I'm being followed. Came with being Hermes and hiding from Argus. How much hiding did you do exactly? Oh man, you should have seen this story from my perspective. So many close calls. It was basically like a movie. Okay. I'm so That's glad good. you waited until now to tell us that. <laughs> Still getting over what happened in the atrium. Can't believe I talked them down like that. That was pretty good, Dante. Very well done. Just like I told you, Dante. 
You could change the world with your words. Yeah, but except he just, you know, kind of did, but mainly just talked people out for murder, which which Taylor definitely did. I don't care if that that guard woke up long enough to shoot you. That guy's dead. There's no way that guy lived. And by saving me, I think you might have done just that. I was terrified, but I knew I could trust you. Thanks, man. And, uh, Taylor, we need to talk. What did I do now? Well, you did kind of leave me. He's dead as, he's dead as AF. Yeah, no, the guard died. I told you that you'd be thankful for this car one day. Might not hurt to have a little more faith next time. He starts to laugh, but quickly winces in pain. <laughs> Funny. <sighs> but save the wisecracks for later. You gotta rest up and get better. <laughs> killed someone, Taylor. You killed somebody, he's dead. Yeah, Taylor, you're a murderer. That face right there, this face behind me, that is the face of a murderer. Isaac groans in pain. Oh, fine, fine. What should we do next, then? Probably stay away from Taylor, because he might have a taste for blood now. You know what I mean? Like, this guy right here might have a taste for blood now. We gotta be careful with that. I wouldn't mind taking a look around. I've always wondered what the colonies were like. Go for it. Taylor nods and starts looking around for his next victim. <laughs> He's gonna murder everybody here. I might let Taylor murder me. I would too, to be honest. I would. He's pretty cute. The rest of us stick by Chiron, who continues to tend to the fire. Gotta say, he definitely knew what he was doing. The warmth is appreciated. We all sit down, finding solace and peace of where we are. Isaac, we've got to talk about that drive. We gotta do something about that. I Maybe. know. I know. I mean, he's we gotta destroy, destroy it, right? Otherwise, we'll all be in danger. Yeah, that's part of why I got this fire ready. You want me to burn it? Don't they? Okay, but the leader of Argus will have no idea that they did this. She'll have no idea. She'll never believe him. Like, why would she believe that? This is a bad way to do it, guys. There's a bad way to do it. That's the idea. Well, I think you should probably, like, you know, film it and then send her a picture or something. I don't know. Show her the serial number. <laughs> you heard Clay's vision, Isaac. Right now, he's not in harm's way. We won. Mail it to her? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's true. Isaac, if you keep that thing, you might just make his vision come true. With a gift. And not just him, but I think we'd all be in danger. We hurt Argus. We don't need to anger them more. No, probably not. That's probably a little bit extreme. Just let me think. I think we've let you know enough of that this whole time. You know, I'm pretty tempted to see what's on the drive. In the form of a pipe? No, just send Taylor. Just send Taylor. With a bat. <laughs> he just shows up there with a bat. Nah, you could definitely, you could anger them more. You definitely probably could, but you could just send Taylor there with a bat. And they'll be murdered. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, same. But the stakes are too high. Well, do we know that? I guess that's where we differ. Huh? You know, I totally thought I'd die today. I had no guarantee that I could make my vision a reality. Look at this. Look at that right there. God damn. Freaking Isaac working out. Man, every time I see it, I'm like, God damn. So <laughs> I accepted my death a long time ago. If I could leak these secrets, my life might be worth it. Okay. I'm on the fence, too. Isn't it enough to destroy Argus's monopoly? Look at how bright the future is right now. Those secrets could just cause more chaos. You have no idea what you'd be unleashing. I guess. Like I said, just let me think. Are you okay with giving me some time? I'll give you until... This bandage ruins Dante's favorite shirt because it's on the outside for some reason, and I don't understand how that helps anything. Sure. Not like we've got anywhere else to go. 
I'm gonna make like Taylor and take a look around. Alrighty. Have fun. Enjoy. As soon as Dante finished speaking, we all stand up except for Isaac. I guess we have some time to waste while Isaac made up his mind. But I know that he'd make the right choice, so I'm not too worried. My eyes are directed towards Taylor, who's walking around some nearby trees. As much as I want to check out the cabin, I feel like I need to talk to him. I'm still confused by what happened and what went through his mind. Why'd he ditch us, only return and save the day? That question in my mind, I slowly approach him. Hey there, Delta. Hey, what's up, buddy? He smiles, almost like he's completely unfazed. We almost died a couple of times and he ditched us. And he murdered somebody. Oh, did you come for an apology? That's fair, but I think I gave a pretty good one in the car. He tilts his head back um, to where Isaac is sitting. That's true. He did stitch up Isaac while we drove here. Also, don't forget how I saved you with the bat. Part of me was driven by guilt to make it up to you, you know? So you murdered for guilt's sake? You're a murderer because of guilt. All right, fair enough. I nod. I guess I'm just curious if you accept my apology. I was kind of selfish and stupid, but it felt right. I mean, in fairness, he never chose to be in this situation in the first place, so I kind of feel um, like Taylor had every right to do that. I do feel that way. Like, I feel like all of these guys had every right to do that <laughs> because, uh, you know, Isaac kind of put them all in this situation and they didn't really have a choice on the matter. So it's, it's kind of a catch 22. I was torn between two worlds. Do I join Cypher and potentially die? Or do I sit back and continue my life as a streamer? I mean, maybe you can still do that. We don't know. It's possible. In the moment, it felt like my choice was obvious. But guilt usually waits until after we do the stupid thing. Fair enough, that's true. That's really all I have to say, though. It was stupid. Stupid enough that I won't blame you if you hate me. Oh, I don't hate you, Taylor. Part of me wants to think- Taylor, you know I could never stay mad at you. <laughs> oh, Taylor, you know I could never stay mad at you. Oh. And I promise never to take advantage of that. <sighs> Thanks for working with me here. I was kind of worried. Okay, well, I'm worried that you may murder me someday, so... He smiles. Just know that I promise to never do it again. I was actually scared that I made my vision come to pass. Argus could take me in, lock me up, and leave me in the dark. I mean, that's a legitimate fear. Like, I kind of feel like he would had every right to do what he did. I mean, every I guess single they person still here could, did. Given what we did, but the entire world saw our faces, so it'd be difficult. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're celebrities now. <laughs> Sure, it's something like that. I kind of think you might be a little bit of a celebrity thing. I didn't, cor I don't correct him because the thought seems kind of nice. If we disappeared, I feel like people would notice. They're probably waiting for Hermes to make a victory speech. <laughs> I bet that we can march right back into Toronto and bathe in applause. I wouldn't test that theory yet, but yeah, maybe. There is the matter of that drive, though, and Clay's vision to top it all off. True. But maybe we should just go into the middle of town and destroy the drive in front of everybody and then just be like, it's not worth it. Not worth it. Everybody take a drink. Shot. <laughs> and then every, you know, and then the, the boss of Argus shows up and she's like, thank you for doing that. That's very kind of you. Now everybody applause. Blah, 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 blah. And everybody's happy. And then end of day. What do you think Isaac should do? I the mean, lean I'm that part streams. of camp. Please destroy More the like thing. the lean that sucks. Am I right? Ha 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 ha. Um, oh God, they're making me decide. Um, this is a top. I think. So the question is, do I feel like Kalace's vision is true or was the characterization of the Argus leader that they showed um, earlier? Is that genuine? Because if it's genuine, 
she might not be in like a space where she's going to go like, oh, yeah, I'm going to murder all of them. But then there is Clay's vision, which may be true. I don't know. I mean, I feel like you want to destroy Argus. It's prob, but there's probably some good information on there. I, mm, I'm gonna go that Carter, one. Carter, huh? That doesn't really fit my style. I'd prefer to enjoy the new world, not die to create it. But I can tell you that Isaac probably feels the exact opposite. I guess we just have to wait and see what he does. It's definitely a weight on my shoulders, though. Well, fair, but, you know... I'm really a fan of carrying other people's burdens. But for Isaac and all of you, I do almost anything. And you have. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Never mind. I don't know why, but I feel so drawn toward all of you. Maybe we really can stick to that pact we made. Almost anything? Almost. Most anything. Hey, Void Taylor Lord holds 597, up. if you ooh-woo, you gonna get a boo-boo. Ah, uh, Taylor holds out his hand. Until the end? Until the end, baby. I grab his hand and shake it. He pulls me in close until we're almost face to face. Leaning in, he talks directly into you my know, ear. I used to think that fighting fate was futile. Oh, okay. Until I fell for you, that is. Oh. You've really changed my life. Oh, baby, oh, baby. He pulls back and looks directly in the eyes. I value our relationship, Delta. And I'd like to continue seeing each other. After do you have a harem? Apparently I do. I can I've got no a full harem. Fun. Oh, baby, oh, baby. I nod. It was my choice to pursue things with him, after all. Yeah, let's continue Perfect. seeing each other. Ooh, give me that little whisper, baby. Wow. He places his hands on my face and leans in for a kissy kiss. I press my lips against his and let some of my stress melt away. It feels good. It feels like this was a moment we sealed the deal. We're together now. Me and Taylor. He pulls back from the kiss, blushing at I me. I wish we could do that forever. You're something special, Delta. You really are. Still, the name is, you know, I gotta say, guys, the name is still Nazan, so we're gonna have to work on that part, but I get it. I get it. I get it. We're together, but we're gonna have to work on that name thing. We're gonna have to figure that out. <laughs> Gonna have to figure that out. Ended up with all of us either. Really excited for whatever tomorrow brings. One big family. Did I end Just up like with I everybody? Said, remember? I don't think I. I don't think I remember Can't wait everybody. To have you on my stream sometime. Something tells me that business will be booming. The world is definitely waiting to see our faces again. Fair enough. Oh, and Isaac too. I could have an exclusive interview with Hermes. We can even use my following to spread his message. Perfect. Let's do it. Trying to flip this around and help his career. How very Taylor of him. But I can tell he's fine. He's already excited about going back home. Well, okay, fair. Can we spread anything else? Apparently, we're going to be spreading. Uh, ah, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> uh, I think it'd be better to chat with the others. They seem more shaken Go up. On. I won't be offended if you leave. Speaking of Isaac, though. I just saw him go into that cabin. If you talk to him, see if he'd be down to guest on my stream. Okay, I think that's probably not the topic of conversation right now, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Isn't that Taylor's job? Either way, I'd nod and leave Taylor to his own devices. Spread Taylor? Uh, well, you know, that, well, that seems like that's in our future. I definitely need to have a chat with Isaac. How was he feeling right now? Questionable priorities, seriously. Taylor went, said he went into one of those cabins, so I follow suit. I wonder how it feels knowing you've changed the world forever. So, are they saying that I've... I, I guess they're saying that I have successfully romanced everybody, if, if that's what Taylor's saying. I don't know if that's true, because we never really... Like, Dante and I never really... These are nice! Oh my god! <laughs> When I enter the cabin, Isaac has his back facing towards me. Wait a minute. This is how the Zeros live in cabins like this? Because this is really nice. He's staring down into the fireplace, holding a bo that bottle of whiskey. One hand with an open palm braces himself Delta. against the wall. Hey, what's up, buddy? He turns to me, wobbling slightly. Not sure if it's from the pain or the alcohol. Hey, it helps with the pain. 
If you can give me another option, I'll take it. Well, I'm going to stop right there, but uh, yes, that is one way to do it. He places the bottle down on the nearby table, smiling at me. It's clear that he doesn't just mean physical pain, given everything that happened. Being shot and held at gunpoint by Argus was sure to leave an impact on anybody, even Hermes. I guess we're just passing time until the morning, huh? Then we'll head back into the city and see what happened. I notice he's intentionally glossing over the drive. It's fair, though. He clearly has a lot going on in his mind. What did happen, though? We lost all reception at the city limits. He points up at the sky. If you listen close, you can hear the helicopters. Far away, sure, but they're still up in the air. You know what that means? No. I shake my head. They're not looking for us. They had eyes on us since the moment we left that building. If they wanted to chase us, they'd know exactly where we are. I mean, you're assuming quite a lot. I'm going to say he's assuming a lot here. They seem more interested in what's going on inside the city. And that thought is both terrifying and exciting. Super exciting. I love it. What do you think is happening? I bet they're celebrating on the streets right now, probably hooking up all the zeros with phones, an historic moment. We should be cautious. It could have escalated them. I'm going to say this one. Oh, you're right. I bet the world is watching it all go down. Can you imagine coming together to witness the creation of unity? I think I did something really special, Delta. It opened a lot of doors. Well, that you've also had a lot of whiskey, of so you might want to calm down. sympathize with the leader of Argus, though. Stuck between red tape and ideals from past generations. We're all tangled up in webs far greater than we realize. Yeah, yeah, there is that. I, You know, I mean, she did seem somewhat sincere course, in her belief there. all that sympathy disappears when I think of Clace. I believe his vision. I, 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 I do too, it, but... but I don't really have a choice. There must be something else what going we on. We did, there. or what we—you know what I mean? There's got to be something else. Could going on determine there. our fate. Maybe. Hmm. I just hope it all ends well. When we get back home, we'll have a lot to catch up on. I hate not having reception. I feel so vulnerable. Well, nothing wrong with being vulnerable. Thanks for coming to see me, by the way. Oh, you know, you know, it's all good. Hey, me and Taylor, um, we're dating too now, by the way. So we're going to have to come up with like a schedule. Like maybe you could be like Tuesdays and Thursday boyfriend. Taylor will be like Mondays and Fridays. Dante, maybe we'll put on Wednesdays. I don't know. We'll see how it works. Anything you wanted to talk about? I mean, we just went through a lot. You holding up all right? Do you like Tuesdays and Thursdays? Is that good enough for you? Or do you are you more of like a weekend boyfriend type? Do you want like Saturday, Sundays? Because we can make that work too. Maybe you like brunch on Sundays. I don't know. I'm curious about your vision. I am kind of curious about the vision. I'm going to go with that. Oh, right. Well, I'm pretty sure you could already figure it out. I mean, you've already lived through most of it. Well, good. Was I in your vision originally? He smirks at me. I uh, seem to be in some type of leadership position. They say I was a bridge between worlds and a guide to the people. That's actually how I came up with the Hermes code name. Yeah, that makes sense. That tracks. I'm part of a group named Cypher. Some sort of competitor to Argus. Their first true rival. We forced innovation and change, created competition. That seemed to be enough to get the world out of its rut. I mean, say what you want, but things have been pretty stale. Argus made everybody scared of change. I never stopped believing that. Okay, fair enough. But their reign was never going to be permanent anyways. It was only a matter of time until somebody had a vision like mine. Because of it... I was able to think outside the box and use my skills. You want to know something stupid? Argus well, always thought they were too big to fail. That nobody would take them down. The chaos would be too much. <laughs> well, don't they all? Don't they all think, think that? Because of that, they were arrogant and easy to hack. 
too big to fail often goes hand in hand with being easy to topple. They just don't expect anybody to do something so reckless. Yeah, like um, get shot <laughs> by a guard that was killed, pretty much murdered by a bunny. But that's how things have been all throughout history. Sitting on your throne, proud of your rule, until you're stabbed in the back. Because at all that right. point, the change could only come from within. It's a lot to take in, Delta. It really is. Sometimes I wonder if I'm just destined to be alone. Even if I destroy the drive, I can't guarantee that you won't resent me. Why? Why would I resent you? What did you do? I dragged all of you into danger. Ah, uh, it's true, you did. I lied. You're I not wrong. The system, You're not wrong. But I did it all in the name of your safety and a better future. I don't know about the safety part. I'm not sure about the safety part. But better future, maybe. Safety definitely didn't work out. The fact that I had to deceive you? It's almost too much to bear. There's a bear? Where? We better run. My only consolation is the fact that we won. I hope that the days ahead are enough to pay you back. It doesn't feel like we're under their thumb anymore. We're free. But only on Tuesdays and Thursdays because Mondays and Wednesdays are me and Taylor's day's day. Okay? We just gotta keep that under wraps. I mean... Just look around. We're on a colony, Delta. And we can go back to Toronto, too. Yeah, we could, probably. Maybe we get some McDonald's for breakfast? Like a McRiddle? Be delicious. What do you think? We might be the first people in the world with that right. Just like Chiron was the first zero to bridge the gap. Real tr Oops. First in all of history. <sighs> but someone had to do it, right? Argus was running on borrowed time. Almost literally. I nod and decide to shift the topic back to Chiron. No. Why? Did he want to? Yeah, he wanted to know why they defected, who they Fair were. Fair enough. I'd be curious too. But he never asked me, which is a little odd. He eyes the bottle of whiskey, but decides not to take any more. You know something weird? When we met Chiron on the street, I recognized him. You did? No, not really. He just looked eerily familiar. Like the spitting image of someone my dad used to work with. Oh, no. I looked into it, and sure enough, it checked out. He defected with his wife, but that's where the info stops. Oh. I'm pretty sure they conceived Chiron on the colony. Or whatever they used to call him back when he lived there. I just know that Chiron was his father's name. And so, I decided to pass it down to his son. Oh, wow. How did you remember all that? You guys are basically the same age. Is it? Well, not really, but... It doesn't really change anything. As far as I'm concerned, it's just coincidence. Exactly. Okay. So somehow, Isaac, there's a lot of coincidences in this game. I, I can't stop myself from connecting dots. I mean, they defected. Like, they were running away. A little while after, my dad was killed in that invasion. Oh. Does that mean they were all trying to do this too? Maybe they were part of one of the past, like, attempts on this. Were they working against Argus like we are? It's fun to think about, isn't it? Their kids finishing the job? But I'm sure it's just my imagination seeing things in the dark. Probably. After all, we're the ones who create the constellations. At the end of the day, they're just stars. We find things where we want to. I guess it was true. This fact doesn't really change anything. We would have ended up helping whoever, whichever Zero came across that day. It's almost like that exact moment tied them to us for the long haul. I do find it a bit interesting, though. Isaac implied that Isaac or Argus might have killed his father. I, disre I disregard it, but Clay's vision means assassination might be in their repertoire. I'm uh, going to go back outside and mingle with the others. 
Clearing the air like this with everybody is a big help. Glad that you were one of the first, Delta. I really am. Okay, well... If we can make it through this, we can make it through oh, anything. We're gonna get the sappiness. <laughs> Sappy Isaac returns! You know. Uh-oh. As a couple. This could be good. After this, I think we can start focusing on the fun things. Yeah. Sappy Isaac is best, Isaac. He holds out his hand, and I accept the invitation. They look pretty cool right now, huh? Okay, you lost me there. He smirks and tilts his head towards the wound on his shoulder. A man who stood against the world and won. But even then, I'm still more proud of our bond. Okay. Like I said, it'll always be my greatest achievement. It being an assassination makes world? sense why the alarm didn't go off. It would make sense. That would do it, for yeah. sure. Tomorrow is nothing but a blank slate for us. Yay. I lean in for a kiss, and our lips are soon locked. The only witness to our passion is the dancing of the flames. When he pulls back, I can see the reflection of the fire in his eyes. It's enough to lure me back in for another kiss, then another, and another. Delta is the real player. Definitely. Delta is... Delta literally has made every single person fall in love with them. And... I can't even figure out why. He pushes me back against the wall as it continues. I can feel the warmth of the flames heat up my lower body. Or maybe... It wasn't the flames. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh yeah, it wasn't the flames. It was the flames of different Void type. Voidlord 597. Go directly to Horny Jail. Now. <laughs> Isaac starts to tug on my belt, but the cabin door immediately opens. Dante walks in. Oh no. And immediately shocked and oh, embarrassed. Uh, excuse me. You should be embarrassed. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Oh, Dante, god damn it. I got I got blocked. I got C blocked by Dante here. Isaac lets go of my belt and we both turn to face Dante. <laughs> Don't worry. You're excused. Just uh make sure to knock next time. Or you know you could join in, you know. Let's make it a party. Right, of course. Didn't mean to intrude. I was here for Delta. Everyone is. Everyone is. <laughs> Everyone is. Well, I'll give you some privacy. We just finished talking anyway. No, we didn't. Well, kind of. You sure you don't need some more time? I mean, I mean, I mean. Isaac smiles, stepping forward. We have all the time in the world, Dante. Yeah, we don't have to stop now. Yeah, I suppose we do. Sure. Catch you by the fire then, Delta? Well, yeah, sure, I guess. I smile and nod. Check out the threesome. Threesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, Dante immediately closes the door after Isaac leaves. But not only that, he locks it too. Perhaps Isaac should have considered that. Well, at least we have our privacy for whatever you want to talk about sec. now. Okay. I'm holding. Hold, please. He takes a determined step forward and grabs a bottle of whiskey. Everybody with the whiskey and the Delta. One large swig later, he turns to face me with a look of sorrow in his I eyes. I did it, Delta. You did what? I don't know what you did. In the server room, I found a computer. Yeah, I remember that. Isaac's mod gave my phone some, some high level access. I, I looked into my family, Delta. I really did it. Oh, hey, that's no, great. It's not. No, it's not. Well, okay. I, uh, shout... The, his shout echoes through the cabin. He takes a step back like he regrets raising his voice. Sorry, I didn't mean to shout. It's just... I wish I didn't do it. Okay, why was Has that? Has that ever happened to you, Delta? No, well... Sought out information only for... Only for it to hurt you? Well, there was this one time that I broke into a high-level security like HQ building for a major corporation and then I went to a server room and somebody got shot there was that time do you remember that of course sometimes uh we even know it'll hurt beforehand yeah that's part of why I moved away from home I don't know why I moved away from home uh uh 
Wow, really? I guess sometimes you have no choice but to run away. Part Don't of forget that I time you read your friend's diary and violated his facts. trust. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, I guess sometimes, but I could. Uh, I need to stay and face I the facts. I had to make a snap decision in that server room, Delta, and, and I knew that it was probably the only chance I'd get. I was put on the spot in the worst possible way. At least I, I, I think it was the worst. But at least now I don't have to live with a what if. In my books, that's the exact same thing as regret. Okay, well, what what makes you so concerned about Ironic what happened? That I'm full of regret either way, huh? What happened? I don't know what happened. What did you find out? Regretful of the knowledge I'd regret not knowing. There's got to be something poetic about that. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I would say it's pretty poetic. I shrug. I'm just curious about what he found out. He places the whiskey back down, but I can tell he was tempted to have more. Well, I didn't even know where to start. I figured I'd just look them up and find an address. There's a long pause before he continues. Okay. It's just... He almost breaks down in front of me. His eyes glisten. I know he's holding back, but I can hear the sheer sorrow in his They're voice. Gone, Delta. Just gone. What happened? How could they just the be gone? The last entry in their file was some kind of oh. incident report. It, uh, it mentioned something about a gas leak in the house. Uh, well, that's a little suspicious. Oh. It was only a few years after I ran away. I, I, I don't know how to feel. I'm just so confused. Goddamn. Um, he's shaking. I simply step forward and wrap my arms around him. What is my vision, then? We're happy. We're a family. Void Lord 597, oh. the only wet blanket here is the lean. No, that's not true. <laughs> hey. Oh, no. Yeah, what is his vision, then? That doesn't make any sense. My brother seems so proud when he looks at me, like everything is fine, and I'm worth looking up to. And the hate between me and my parents is long gone. The, 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 this vision is what I've Whoa. based all my decisions around. Oh. Okay, well. And what? It's a lie? Well, maybe the thing is a lie. Maybe maybe something else happened. I continue holding him and just let him bend. I knew this was going to happen. I would have stayed. I would have fixed things and, and spent more time with them. But then you wouldn't be who you are today. I... You're right. I know you're right. And it sucks. I like that version of me in the vision, though. I, I feel so complete. Like I can tell I'm missing something in reality. You have a family in all of us, Dante. I can tell he's starting to calm down. Yeah. Well, that was a big 180 and right there. If I stayed, I guess I wouldn't be here right now. But maybe they wouldn't have had another kid. He didn't this is pretty sad. I agree. This is pretty sad. He didn't know this other kid did not. Nobody deserves to die in a gas leak accident. I think that's the part that hurts the most, Delta. I, I really. The old horny to sadness. I know this really took a turn. This whole thing took a turn. He sniffles. Everyone is out there celebrating victory and a new tomorrow, but the tomorrow I've discovered leaves me feeling hollow. You should be thankful for your vision, Dante. Why, though? Uh -huh. Remember what we talked about on the way to the club. Vaguely. Visions are indistinguishable from reality. Yeah. You'll get to spend some time with your family almost every day. Oh, that's a pretty good way to think about it. He sniffles some more, but I can tell the tears have subsided. You know, I usually pride myself on my level head. This just really shook me up, you know? Well, I mean, that's kind of fair, so... He wraps his arm around me and hugs me back. But I know that you're right. They'll comfort you every day until your last. I have a feeling you will, too. Together until the end, remember? Oh, uh, here I am. I'm dating Dante now, I guess. Of course, until the end. Thanks. No problem. 
I mean, I'm dating everybody else. Am I this? Why stop there? <laughs> you know, he shakes his head and shrugging off the sadness. A moment later, our tight embrace is Sorry broken. Again, for raising my voice, it just. Hey, don't worry about it. Wasn't easy learning what I did. I know. Woohoo, harem. It definitely can. He rubs the back of his head. You know, I guess my vision was a good one, after all. Not many people get to spend time with lost loved ones. There you go. See, I was right. All along. I'm looking forward to the next time it happens now. I can just picture their smiles, the taste of the food. It's a perfect moment. Frozen in time for us to enjoy. Well, it's, it, it's definitely better than Clay's where Clay sees his death every day, so that sucks. And nobody can take that away from me. Our love as a family prevails, even over death. <laughs> uh-huh. Isn't that You're the right. most beautiful thing you ever heard? Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. I dig it. I nod, enjoying the reversal of his mood. Sometimes all it takes is a little creative thinking. He clearly is still grieving, but this new train of thought will help Speaking him. of <clears throat> beautiful things... Oh no, we're about to get sappy Dante. He gulps as he looks at my eyes with the slightest hint of shyness. Remember how I wanted to start seizing the moment? Yeah, what about it? He places his hands in mine. There's this scene in one of my books. That's uh, uh, two lovers in a cat. Uh-oh, I like how his vision... Like one. <laughs> vision ranged from Dion uniting lost loved ones to your own death. Is, this, is he going to seize Delta? I think that's about to be the thing. He blushes brightly. It's where they share their first kiss. I just thought, I thought it'd be cool if... Um... Go on. He cuts himself off while stumbling on his word. I mean, I think it's the perfect place for... Yeah, just do it. I cut off his words by going in for a kiss. He lets out a soft moan and raises one of his hands to my face. Softly stroking my cheek, he presses himself in for more into the kiss. Our first kiss... It would last for what it feels like forever, but then Dante slowly you pulls know, back. I had a whole speech rehearsed. It seemed like you needed some help. Me? <laughs> Never. He smirks. Good to know we were on the same wavelength, though. I knew you'd be special since the day I met you. Well, apparently you and everybody else. <laughs> though it's hard to believe we only met a few weeks ago. So much has and happened, it's, it's hard to comprehend. And so much is yet to happen, too. Yeah. And for me, my coma Rebbe will no longer dictate how I feel. Okay, good. It's That's good. Something you shouldn't. After the light could leave us feeling so lost in the dark. Right. But even in the darkness, you can always find light. I guess you just have to know where to look. As he speaks those words, he looks right into my eyes. Anyway, you ready to call it? Uh, well, you know... You know, you, okay. I nod as he heads towards the locked door. As soon as it opens, a f uh, frigid air rushes into uh, the cabin. I'll be waiting by the fire. I think we're just waiting for Isaac to make a decision, but I know that guy better than almost anyone else. And I just want you to know that we're going to be fine. Isaac is going to burn that drive to keep us all safe. And if he doesn't, I might just put up a fight about it. Okay, well, I would love to see that, so if you could hold off, Wally. He, with a smile, he leaves the building. I soon follow suit after and close the door behind me. It shuts with a loud banging noise that echoes through the night. Oops. Aren't I missing two of them? Don't I still have two more? One, uno, dos. I think there's two more. Yeah, there should be two more. I would think there would be two more. As soon as I exit, I notice Chiron is looking directly at me. Oh, I got the Night Stalker. He waves me over, and I see no reason not to oblige. He's standing by some trees. I must have disrupted hey, Delta, how are things going? Better now that I'm out here with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can never turn off that charm, huh? No, no, I cannot. <laughs> it just doesn't. It just, I know you all love me that's here. That's part of why I admire but both please, of you so much. But please, try to contain yourselves. No, really. I already felt nauseous earlier but today. I guess I'm being a little biased. You know, the whole first in all of history thing? Isaac changed my life, so I owe him almost everything. Well, there you go. Guess I'm lucky he's the good guy, huh? 
wouldn't want to be in debt to someone evil. But at the end of the day, I guess it's all subjective. Sure, I guess it is. Like, I'm sure Argus views Isaac as... Kiss, kiss, kiss. So I, I guess think guess that's all we're going to be doing understand. tonight, so... The majority has spoken, though, and they share my views. Fair enough. Gotta appreciate some validation now and again, right? Right. I'm glad that the people side with Cypher. And I'm glad that Isaac survived that gunshot. I, I mean, can we talk about... Do it. Do it now. I have shot. to wait. It feels like... Legoshi's talking. Still, it's... I can't interrupt Legoshi. I don't know what that guard stood to gain, though. Must have just been revenge against Taylor. <laughs> well, Taylor did murder him. Pretty sure that was his last dying move. Nobody likes being the victim of a sneak attack after all, but wow. If Taylor were a second later, we could all be dead. He definitely made it up to us for the ditching. In the best possible way, yeah. Anyway, enough about that. Okay, enough about that. You tell sure, me what's what next. think about the colony. I was born and raised here after all. Does it look like you thought it would? Oh, okay. I, yeah, it's beautiful, Chiron. I mean, he's got a point. Isaac, just be willing. That's true. He does. But Isaac, Isaac just loves everything and everyone. Maybe we could settle down here after this. Now don't get too far ahead of me, Delta. I think I'm going to stay in the city for a while. It's not as much green, like I said, but I can deal. All right. Crossing that wall changed my life. Well, better. clearly, that changed everybody's life. Ago, everybody's like life is completely changed. Pilot. Just All right. going through the motions, routine after routine. Everything Tell me more. It is just amazing to me. It's a city full of opportunity, and I aim to take advantage of that. That is, if everything ends well. But all signs are pointing to yes. Taylor could sneak attack me from behind. <laughs> and he would. And he definitely would. He definitely would. There, change the word. Thar, change the word. I mean, there's no way Isaac. I don't know. Keep what, that drive. what did you change? He'd I don't know what you changed. Off going back to that HQ and letting them shoot us. It'd get things done a lot quicker and with a lot less paranoia. I mean, okay. Well, that's true, Ugh. I guess. Yeah, sorry for being grim, but you know what I mean. I'd rather not have a target on my back for the rest of my life, especially after what we learned about Clay's vision. Maybe yeah, true. Holds Everybody wants this thing Good destroyed. Thing they I might think. not have a monopoly anymore. They could probably kill us remotely with how much they control. Wow, you really said that last part with a very strong emphasis. I don't know how I feel about that. Kill us remotely? We should ask Clay if we're allowed to tour with him. At least he has security, and he's always flying from place to place. After seeing Toronto, I kind of want to see what else is out there. Yeah, we can go to, like, Quebec or something. Touring with Clay's would be pretty fun and extremely safe. I know enough about idols to know that their security is top-notch. We're celebrities too now, right? I mean, they had cameras on us during that final standoff. It was a pretty historic moment, so... Oh, safe. Got gotcha, you, safe. Faces. Safe. We're going to be totally safe. So I bet everyone knows well, our faces. Even if they don't, I know people from my colony do. That gathering outside was a big mix of zeros and city folk. I locked eyes with a few of them, and without a word, they understood. They knew why I was never in the town square. They knew that I became a champion for all of them, and most importantly, they knew... No unscheduled the disassembly of the plane? None. Hopefully not. Ugh. It's like that scene from The Boys. He places his hand on the tree and sighs. I just wish that he could have been there, you know? I do too, but he... Didn't he die on a tree or something? He looks up to the top of the tree. This is is that the tree? To climb. Oh no, we that's sad. That easy. It's pretty beginner. All right. The deeper you go into the forest, the taller they get. That's where I'd watch the city and dream of experiencing it. Uh huh. It's like I got everything I always wanted, except for him. And that's the lame part. I'm not Well, that's pretty sad. Though. I know he'd be happy that I moved on and lived my life. Not only that, but we saved zeros from being stuck on the colonies. Yeah, it's a pretty good uh, trade off. So the stuff that you happened know. to him won't happen anymore. And especially the stuff that happened to the town square. In my mind, those zeros deserve a monument ASAP. Probably. That's probably going to happen. It feels weird to witness a historic moment, doesn't it? We're all going to remember where we were when it happened. Everything felt different before that. It's, it's hard to explain. It's like a new era. Yeah, you're right. Glad we can share it together. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, he was uh, still alive in the tree. Well, I know he was still alive in the tree, but then he died... 
Did he die, like, falling from... I thought that's what happened. You mind if I have some time to myself, Delta? I'm just gonna reminisce for a little bit. Okay. I nod, and he looks back at the tree. Come to think of it, I could use some time to myself, too. I make my way back to the cabin, thinking about almost everything. I'm surprised Chiron didn't mention anything about his parents. Maybe he thinks he missed his chance to talk to Isaac about it. If there was a time and a place, it would have been in HQ. However, Isaac knows a lot more than he's been letting on. I was tempted to bring it up with Chiron, but it wasn't my place. That was Isaac's job now, whenever he felt ready. But it was a delicate subject. Chiron hates his parents. No idea how he'd react knowing his name after the guy. It just makes me realize there's a uh, there's still a long road ahead. So this wasn't the end. It was a new beginning. With the pleasant thought lingering in my head, I enter the cabin. Well, that was a uh, comparatively to the other ones. That was pretty. Uh, That's pretty anticlimactic. You know what I mean? That one didn't have as much uh, kissy kissy times as the other ones. Yeah, disappointing. My first instinct was to imbibe. Or, imbibe the whiskey that everyone's been sharing but I feel like I need a clear head to process everything that's going on I described the aura of our group as a mix of denial and optimism we didn't really know what was happening back in Toronto, we can only guess oh, to, to be fair, you slept with him in the hotel that's true, we did, for sure I wonder what kind of secrets Argus was hiding something called Panop Panop Panopticon, that's the word if I only had reception, I'd search it up, but there's none to be found. Life with uh, life without a working phone seems terrible. It feels so vulnerable. A second later, the door hey, opens. Delta. Thought I'd come see what's up. Ah, just trying to process everything. It's a lot. A lot is probably an understatement. I'm sorry for panicking back at the HQ, by the way. I definitely say it was panic worthy. Yeah, that's what everyone keeps saying. I didn't know what to expect from today, but it wasn't that. Until today, she only existed inside of my vision. The leader of Argus, though? Wow. That is kind of a big thing, for sure. It makes sense that I never saw her, then. No one else did, either. At least until today. Are you holding up all right? I mean, that's kind of a big question. Because of my vision, I'm never really all right. I'm always just waiting until the next time it happens. They gave me some pills, though, and I make sure to take them. They're supposed to calm me down and stop me from dreaming. Well, does it work? Oh, that's right. My counselor said that visions are basically dreams. I suppose if you could suppress those, then things would be alright. But I have a feeling he's developed a dependency on those pills. I would have a sudden flashback to our time at the Triple R. Those gummies he had gave him a dreamless sleep, as he put it. Perhaps there were better alternatives than those it pills. It can get really hard sometimes, you know? The vision could come at almost any time. But my old manager gave me this scarf when I told him about it. Sometimes when it happens, I grab at my neck in real life. I can never pull the rope off my neck in the vision. But when I tug on the scarf and it comes loose, sometimes the vision ends. I guess it's a way of tricking my body to snap back. It doesn't always work, but it tends to come in handy. Well, that's a pretty good coping mechanism. To be fair, anything is better than seeing your death. Yeah, it might be. I mean, that's a tough one. Like, if you had to go through that, like, on a semi-regular basis, that would be tough. He had visions uh, right in front of us, and we didn't even know it. Hey, uh, I have a question. I have an answer. Well, the Maybe. vision makes it really hard to live a normal life. There are days where it can get really, really rough. And on days like that, I just wish it would happen already. Does that make me a bad person? Uh, no. Um. I mean... No, you can't say that. I don't think you should whisper something like that. I mean, I think that would be tough to handle for anybody. That would be really hard. Yeah, of course not. It doesn't make you a bad person. That's a hard thing to go through. A lot through. of people can't. I tried looking for a support group before, but my label wouldn't let me go. People would gossip or something. Well, yeah, they probably would, actually. That kind of makes sense. Um, but 
it's not right for them to stop you for sure, but like, damn, that would be tough to go through. Like, how would you get through that? I don't know. Anyway, I hope things make a bit more sense to you. Lay up my dosage before letting me take this break. Something about wanting to avoid a public incident. Okay, did it work? I just miss my old manager. I know he would have fought for me, but since I'm all alone, I usually just do what they say. We know what's best for you is their most common excuse. I know they just want to make money off of me. <laughs> At least my old manager had heart. Well, that, yeah. That's the one thing you need in a business like this. In a sea full of greed, kindness really stands out. Did I ever tell you how I met him? No. Yeah, that's true. You haven't. You just told me that he's oh. dead. Well, he approached me after that talent show. Wanted to organize my transfer to a new school. My family obliged, and we started planning the move. Yeah, it sounds like he really believed in you. Oh, he definitely did. He proved it every opportunity he could. Also, I had a best friend when I was in school. His parents were best friends with mine, too. When it came time to move, they wanted to move as well. I was actually really happy. I wouldn't have to lose my best friend. It was a long drive and I convinced his parents to let him come in our car. So there we were, all four of us. It felt like we all had the world in our hands. But when you do, it always finds a way to slip through your fingers. Well, not necessarily. I was the only one who survived the accident on the way there. Oh, Just no. I remember waking up in a hospital bed in a world without them. What? 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 What, what is... Okay, Clace, my God. Uh, the Emmy Award for Most Depressing Backstory goes to... His parents found out pretty fast, of course. They came to visit me, and I was actually hopeful. If anybody would take care of me, it would be them. But I saw nothing in their eyes, except resentment and hate. They told me I deserved a bunch of awful things, and left me there all alone. Jesus! Apparently it was my fault. Just Why? Just because I wanted to sit beside my friend. What is this story? Everything felt hopeless for me at that point. I lost everybody. Oh my god! I was cursed with this vision. Oh my god! Then my manager came to see me in the hospital. He held my hand. This is horrible. This whole thing's horrible. And he did. Up until the day that he died, too. Oh my god! That's when I started negotiating new contracts. And this hiatus. Okay, wow. Okay, well, I have no words. He actually had the incident scrubbed from the internet. That's when we came up with the stage name and left my old life behind. Okay. Right. He mentioned that Clace wasn't his real name. I do miss my old name, though, pretty badly. I can still hear my friend calling it out every time he saw me. Sometimes I think that part of me died with them in the accident. If you, you know, if you, if you want somebody call you by i'll do it i mean i i honestly i don't know what to say what do i say really of course i'll do whatever you want well, promise to keep it between us okay what the the name honestly i'd tell you to take your pick uh well that's not the, the question that i asked but it okay started out as william and then people called me will Oh. Well, it turned into Bill for some reason. I hated that one. But eventually that turned into Billy. And it stuck. Okay. You want, you want me to go with Billy or do you still hate that? Okay, so his name is William. They always said it was the name that keeps on giving. But if I had any say in the matter, I'd choose Will or Billy. Okay. I'm going to go. You got it, Will. Okay, he laughs and a big smile appears on it his face. Sounds so weird to hear it after all those years. <laughs> but thank you, Delta. No From problem. Still, name still Nason though. I, I it just, just okay. I have, I also have a real name, and it's Nason. But you guys never seem to pick up on that. He steps forward and kisses me softly on the cheek. There is one more thing I wanted to talk about, though. Okay, is it about how I read your diary and invaded your privacy? 
Uh, he walks to the cabin door and locks it before turning around. I know around. you read my diary, Delta. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Bad job of covering your tracks. I did. I was horrible at it. I immediately lock up in fright, and the energy in the room changes drastically. There's only one thing I have to say to you about it. Uh, do you hate me forever? Thank you. Why? That is a complete different response that I was expecting. Huh? I don't know how to explain it, but it really helped me out. It made it a lot easier to open up to you just now. Is this the part where he kills you? No, it's not Taylor. Taylor's the murderer. T Taylor's the murderer. You understand a little more than the others outside. And in my oh, situation, Christ. that makes a world of difference. Oh, you're not mad at me. I mean, you should be mad at me. Oh, never mind. We're fine. He steps forward until he's close to me again. Oh, I definitely am. Actually, I consider it the end of us. What? This is... I'm getting so many mixed signals here. Oh. But it's also the start of something new. Okay. It's the thing about burning bridges, Delta. It's the only way we can build new, even stronger ones. And nobody says they can't lead to the same place as before. Okay. Also, I was gonna kiss you on the lips, but I decided to downgrade to the cheek. Let's call it even for what you did to me. That seems fair. That seems... That seems fair. Uh, there are other ways to take down bridges without burning it. You definitely could take it with an axe, but I'm kind of glad that Clay didn't have an axe right now, so I shrug and tell him that's fine with Let's me. Let's get back outside then, all right? I'm dying to see what Isaac does next. I am glad I didn't die from that uh, conversation. Uh, <laughs> it may be unintentional, but I could see... Uh, <laughs> but that could also be a really dark pun. I guess it doesn't really matter, though. I nod and we head to the door. Why is dying highlighted? I don't know. <laughs> it was a dark joke, I guess. Uh, he unlocks it and with a loud click and then looks back into my eyes. Ready to see how this all plays out? Sure. Actually, I've been waiting two weeks, three, three weeks since the last time I played to find this out. So here we go. Uh, more than ever, Will, he smiles at me and with a light scoff. Then a moment later, we're back into the night. The campfire illuminates my friends and our final destination. I guess this was the end of our journey. Please don't kill me. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. La boo da beep ba boo doo. There's no fire. Does anybody notice that the fire's not here? Nobody's going to say anything about that. Well, there we go. Uh, I make my way towards the campfire with Clay's. My worry starts to dissipate since we've been safe for a while now. If Argus were going to come after us, they probably would have been here already. I take a seat beside Isaac, who seems lost in thought. He's staring down at the drive, clearly still wondering what to do with it. There's no denying it. Having that information puts our lives in jeopardy. But were our lives worth that much? I can tell that's what Isaac's thinking. Those secrets could change the world. Maybe he's already accepted that his cause might also end up being his demise. Isaac. Hey, what's up, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. I know we're here for you, right? I don't know, do you? Of course. Of course, of I course. I understand how tempted you are. It's not temptation. Well, what what else would it be? Like, to be completely honest, what else would it be? It's right more now. like a calling, you know? Okay. I think I'm supposed to... I think I'm supposed to be the one who does this. You know, I will say that if nothing else, Isaac is definitely lot lacking for confidence. At the very least, that's what I would say about him. Isaac, this is about way more than you now. Huh? Yeah. Until the end, remember? We're in this together. 100%. Yeah. But... I trust you, no matter what. Uh, that was a little shocking to hear, especially given his vision. You think he'd want the path that puts his life in the least amount of danger? Really? He's been right about everything so far. 
Well, tr mm, yeah, I guess. Even if it makes your vision happen? Which could very well be the case. I... Place looks away embarrassed. I've already come to terms with it. Alrighty. How? Well, in my vision, I'm scared and confused. I don't know why it's happening to me. <laughs> You'd think I'd want to avoid the death part, but no. More than anything, I just don't want to be confused when it happens. I want to know why it's happening to me. If it's for a good reason, at least I can accept it. And this seems like a good reason to me. I mean, we're talking about the biggest secrets in the world. If my life is the cost of enlightening everybody, well, it just seems selfish to try and save myself. Besides, I'm not scared of dying. I felt like I deserve it for a long time now. That's part of why I stood up to that security guard. Um, but will you know in the vision? Will you know in the vision? Well, I think in the vision... I don't know. Do you retain your, like, consciousness of, like, your normal life in the vision? I have no idea. I imagine you might. Clace. Uh, it's just like my manager used to say, too. The death of an artist only marks the start of their career. Well, this is really dark. Clace can go to some really dark places. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's such a grim thought. I can only imagine giving someone that kind of advice. But if Clace's manager knew about his vision, it makes more sense. It might, um, um, it might give him comfort that he still needs to be remembered. And when I start to think about it, it's absolutely true. Uh, there are so many artists I know out there because they've died. I feel like we should start to appreciate those that are with us just a little bit more. Place, why are you so depressing and stupid small keyboard, right? Oh, man. Yeah, place kind of goes dark places hey, sometimes. I have a question. Okay, I may have an answer. Yeah? What is it? How does it feel? Um, you know. Dante interjects. Taylor! That's not proper. But... Uh... No, it's okay. I'd be curious, too. Well, my vision has always confused me. Sometimes I think it might mean that I'm dead, too. What is it? Just complete darkness. It's almost like I'm stuck in a void, completely lost and alone. I know that nobody will come save me. Despite that, I just cling to the remnants of hope. Then, it just ends. Well, it's not really like that. By the time the darkness sets in, you've already abandoned hope. Void, it is basically the void. Yeah, that's where Taylor goes, the void. And it's not really darkness either. It's like the absence of everything. Okay. It's something you need to experience before you can understand. Of course, by the time you understand it, it's already over. The way he words it is so peculiar. You know how they say your life flashes before your eyes? Does it though? Yeah. I guess it might. I don't really know, but tell us about it more. It's kind of true. Oh, well, there you go. But it's not the events you relive, it's the emotions. It's like you feel everything and every one you've ever felt. And do you want to know what scares me the most? Sure. He sniffles like he's almost about to cry. I don't feel any of you when it happens. It's like we never even met, or worse. We exchange glances, almost taking some of the despair for our own. Oh, we've got your back, Clace. That vision is of a different you. It has to be. Maybe. Is it peaceful? In the end? Yeah. It's clear that Dante is asking for himself. He must know, want to know how his family felt in their final moments. Do you feel regret? No. If you can tell it's ending, there's almost no need for regret. There are a lot better ways to spend your final moments. Well, probably. We don't know that's different. Uh, that's a different. We don't know that's a different you. Well, that might not be, but I guess the the idea that like he doesn't know them or doesn't feel them or anything like that. Maybe that's saying it is, but I don't know. Like what? Thinking about the people we love. The ones that will never see us again. 
That thought, that seems like it's enough to comfort Dante. He also appears like he's going to cry, but almost out of happiness. I guess he was worried that his parents died while still mad at him. Guess I better start writing new music now. Okay, well you better get on that. Huh? You know, five albums over ten years? I never thought I'd actually have to deliver. Oh. I can get you my guitar if you want. Sure, I'd love to see it. Oh, yay, let's have a little show. You mean your vision is supposed to happen within the next ten years? I think so. So I promised them whatever they wanted. In reality, I just wanted a taste of freedom before the end. How did you know that? Did you see a calendar in your vision? That would be kind of weird. Maybe just like a newspaper was standing on the, like, table or something? But now, we're gonna keep you safe. We're gonna keep the entire group safe. Alrighty. I guess I have my work cut out for me then. As long as Isaac does the right thing, yeah. <laughs> Isaac, what do you say? Isaac sighs, his hand trembling, trembling as he grips the drive. I feel like he's already made up his mind. Who wouldn't want to know every dirty little secret that Argus tried to hide? The allure of the unknown. That's why we're all sitting here together, after all. U unified by our desire to embrace the unknown and change the world. I look at Isaac and he smirks at me. An odd smirk. Almost like it's a code. I remember that look. It's the one he gave me in the server room. That was right before he started to download all of the files. Wait. A quick flashing light as he stared at the screen. There was no way that he'd uh, be able to read all of those. He probably couldn't even make out a single word before the next file flashed by. But, oh, that's clever. In order to glean any of those, any info from those files, he would have to relive that moment over and over again. He may not know what they say, but he still holds them all in his mind. If Argus ever launched that new tech, he'd be able to dive in and read them all. Oh. Or better yet, he'd be able to share those memories with everybody. It seemed like Isaac now had the most valuable mind in the entire world. Of course, due to my uh, feelings for him, I could sense that from day one. In this game of chess play through time and space, I call that a checkmate. Irreparable damage was already done to Argus and their monopoly in the present. And if they pursued this nostalgia tech, they'd only seal their fate in the future. If there's one thing you could forge, you couldn't forge, it's a memory. Especially when it's corroborated by our presence. Isaac scoffs down at the campfire. It feels like for those few moments, our thoughts were exactly in sync. And this is why I'm being watched. Does Argus want to know about that drive? Well, if they were worried about the data, there's no need. I know exactly what Isaac's about to do. His grip on the drive tightened, not giving into the temptation in the face of all those secrets, admirable. But it's clear he placed more values on our lives and safety. It's possible that this drive is what caused a rift between the group. It could be the reason that we're no longer in touch in the future, though he didn't hold on to the, he didn't just hold the drive in his hands. He held the power to defy fate, ensure the success of our pact. This. He gulps and pauses, like he's choosing his next words I very guess carefully. This isn't part of our story. With that, he throws the drive into the fire. The collective weight is removed from our shoulders. We hear crackling noises as it burns, and all the data hey, is lost. Here you go. I look over at Chiron, who's handing, or who's handing guitar over to Clayce. That must have been the one he played when he lived out here. Thanks, Chiron. He takes it and strums the uh, strums it a few times before adjusting to the tuning or adjusting the tuning keys. I cannot speak all of a sudden. My brain suddenly go blur. Uh, when I first joined this group, I was definitely the odd one out. I had no idea what the future would bring, which was both a blessing and a curse. That's the thing about the future, though. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I don't know. We'll never know. I know the leem and the chat can't do math. Well, fair. Two plus two is seven after all, so uh, you can never stop it. 
Our group was a mixture of both mentalities due to coma reverie. But now, nobody here had to live their whole life with a vision that influenced their lives. Not even Argus or Coma Rebbe could stand in the face of true resolve and love. We kept the place safe and ensure that none of us drift apart. So, one more song? Yeah, go for it. You got a lot more than that in you. Yeah, of course. Here's something you might not recognize. Bring it, baby! We look at each other and smile as we greet the dawn of an uncertain future. Because despite all odds, you never really knew what was coming next. And when you stop to think about it, isn't that the beauty of life? Hey, Jojo, 57,957, keep that horny in check, or I'll bop you. Ooh, ooh, is it stay the night? I don't think it is. Written and directed and developed by Clace. Well, yay, everybody, yay. Clace did it. I don't think that's the same voice. All right, background art by Jerry Berry. Oh, well, they did great. Jerry Berry was great. Okay, so I like this this game a lot. I will say that. Um, I'm going to play it safe here. I'm going to play it safe here, I think. Hold on a second. Bup, bup, bup. Let me do that, and I'll do... Um, do that one. There we go. Okay, I'm going to play it safe by doing that. I don't know if this song's copyrighted, so I just want to make sure that that doesn't, you know, cause a problem. But this was really good. Okay, now the game is over. What's your favorite Clay song? I don't know. I never got to listen to him. I have to turn them all up. Okay, sorry. Chip, Sean Chiplock is Isaac. Great job. This game was really cool. It was really well done. The writing was incredibly good. The voice acting was incredible. Jesse Incatala is Dante. Really good stuff. In Ocala, Jesse and Ocala, Michael Kovac, we all knew that as Taylor. Um, but good, good stuff. That was some good stuff. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm glad we got to come back to it. I'm glad we got to play some more of it. It was good. Okay, now that the game is over, yeah, what is your favorite Kalei song? That's a good question. I will have to think that one through. In the meantime, let me just take a look at something here. Um, John Malone is the counselor. I was, I was a little surprised that we didn't end up seeing the counselor, um, at the end of the game. Like I was a little surprised that the counselor didn't show up at that time. Uh, cause you kind of would think they would, you know what I mean? Like I kind of felt like they might show up again. Um, but that was cool. Like, uh, Oh man, we're gonna. I'm on here somewhere. I know I'm gonna be on here somewhere. So that was, you know, it was really good. There's two albums on Spotify. Uh, there's Stay the Night and Triple Theater. They got some extra songs I don't think are in the game. Okay, gotcha. I'll have to check it out. But I'm glad we got to play it. Um, I'll be back tomorrow night. Let me go here while we're just doing this. I'm gonna go here. Um, yeah, so that was cool. I just saw you. I saw you. Ooh, I was on there. I definitely am on there somewhere. I didn't see it myself, but I am on the, I was one of the backers of the game. Um, I don't remember what I gave him, but that was cool guys. That was really cool. I'm glad we got to play it. I'm glad we got to finish it. Uh, I am glad we got to kind of experience the ending of that game. So that was cool. Thank you, Clay, for making such an awesome game. Theo floating menacingly behind me. He might murder me just like Taylor would probably murder us, but, um, yeah, it was cool stuff, guys. I was, I'm glad we got to do that. I'm glad we kind of got a chance to finish that up. But um, I think we're going to have to call it a night here. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to be playing more Overcooked with um, with Demon Otter Games and C. James Fox. So look forward to that. I will be seeing you guys tomorrow night for that. I backed at the highest level because Clay's is an amazing dev. Yeah, Clay's is great. Clay's does some good stuff. Um, I would give Clay's a lot of credit for that, which is cool. Um... I might have to go back and take a look at some of the other games. Like there's, um, yeah, there's those, those other two games that they've got. It sounds like one of them might be a little bit more related to it, or are they both kind of related in some way? Cause I'm guessing like the one that's like more adventure style kind of plays in. Yeah. So major minor playthrough win. I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I think we're going to have to push it because I got to get through October, especially because I got, you know, a bunch of scary games I'm trying to get in for October. And plus, we still got Final Fantasy 16 and I'm doing like um, Phasmophobia this coming Saturday with um, Hi-Fi Wolf 
Uh, the voices are some popular names in the industry. They sure are. There are some really good voice actors in the game. Um, but yeah, I got some Phasmophobia coming up on uh, Saturday with Hi-Fi Wolf um, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and one-up Milo. Um, and um, also we are going to be joined by um, Emil Faru for, for the game too. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So we got a lot of stuff coming up. So maybe Dow Major Minor might come in at some point. Uh, never say never on that stuff for sure. So with all that being said, though, I think I'm going to send you guys over to Dark Centilla tonight because I, I think that's the only option I'm really going to have right now. Um, but I hope you guys had a good time. I had a grand old time. I will see you guys tomorrow night. Come check it out. These overcooked like playthroughs are so much fun. So I really, uh, really hope you guys do. It had a lot of references to major minor seemingly being on the same universe and rebels and reveals continues after winds of change. Got it. Okay. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to send you guys over to dark scintilla. You guys have a great night. I will see you guys tomorrow. Like I said, have a good night. I'll see you guys later.